I need lots of noise out of you, please. We're going to go live in a second, and I'm going to say, Welcome to the Sky Lounge. I need you to make a lot of noise. Can you practice for me? Welcome to the Sky Lounge. That's the kind of thing we need. We need that out of you guys as well, though. And then, part of the chat, we ready to go? George is ready to go. So, without further ado, welcome to the Sky Lounge. What a game we ha have for you today. The long-awaited rematch between two of the greatest eight-ball players the game has to offer. It's the battle of two marks. The scene is set. The players are ready. The fans are ready. Okay. It's a race to 31. It's played to black ball rules. The man in charge of the game is, Bri is Brian Moss. We ask for the very best of order throughout the game and that you respect the players at all times. Now it's time to meet the players. From Denny in Falkirk. He's played in some of the greatest money matches in history. A multiple IPA professional champion, including Premier League champion. He won the first match. Scotland's finest is Mr. Magic, Mark Boyle. from his home club and hailing from Sunderland. He's a clinician on the table, the pride of the Northeast, and the 2019 world champion. It's your very own Big Ray, Mark Farnsworth. Shane Thompson. Uh, 
Thank you very much and welcome ladies and gentlemen. We are live from the Skylands up in Washington. This is Beard Productions and we will be with you for quite possibly the next seven to eight hours of scintillating pool. Two players in their prime at the top of the game. They played once already. Can Mark Farnsworth get revenge on Mark Boyle or will it go the Scotsman's way? It's a race to 31 and joining me at the start of this game is ultimate pool professional number one, Shane Thompson. How are we doing Dave, how are we doing? Looking forward to this mate. The, uh, the doors opened at 11 o'clock this morning. I arrived at half past and it was bouncing then. They were, they were open at eight o'clock this morning. Was it eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there was lads in there at eight o'clock this morning. First come, first serve, everyone was told. 400 tickets have been bought and this place is packed. Very, very difficult to call this match, you feel, Shane. There's just not enough between the two players. The first match didn't tell us much about the result for the second match. You just can't take anything from it. A 31-29 victory going to Mark Boyle. Yeah, it was a close game before. Um, and I can see it being the same again this time. Will there be any deciding factor? I saw, obviously, we know when Mark Boyle has probably got the stronger break and you're probably the best cut break in the game. I saw Mark Farns with practice in this morning and he was cut breaking also. Which yeah. is unusual for him. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how um, obviously it's Mark's home table. Um, you know, he, he he would have been practiced on this quite quite a bit over the last few weeks. I think the table got done two weeks ago, so he would have put a lot of time in for it. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure he's got his break sorted out and um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to a cracker to be fair. Forty-five thousand pounds in the middle. Both of these gentlemen find this game probably remarkably easier but it gets a little bit more difficult when there's that amount of money in the middle yeah of course yeah a lot of pressure a lot of people in. there's got to be at least 400 at minimum in here so uh yeah no it, it could it could uh it, it could sway the match as well the, the big crowd um but the northeast boys are coming in force yeah it's absolutely bouncing there's no other word for it an amazing amazing atmosphere as Nick Finn joins me. Oh, what an introduction. Just catching my breath after that one. That's unbelievable, mate. Fantastic. Never seen you so lively. <laughs> I've never been quite so excited for any game. I mean, this really is where it's all at. These kind of money matches, they're few and far between. You know, we, we, we get money matches on a weekly basis, but at this level, to see two players at the very top of the game, Mark Farnsworth, Mark Boyle, they meet each other time and time again on the circuit, and here they are in a race to 31. Best of 61 frames. Right then, guys, I can't let you, uh, I can't let you get away with it, and you're not sitting on the fence. I'm having a score prediction out of you, please. Huh. David, let's go. Right, okay. It's so difficult to pick between the two players. I'm going to go fans with 31-28. 31-28. So pretty much a reversal of the previous uh, so the previous game finished at 31-29 to Boyle. But as we all know, I am no good at predicting results <laughs> of big cash games. So, so you've just you've just you've done Mark no favors there whatsoever. Just, just pick one out of <laughs> pick one out of the clouds. So Shane, your turn. Well, I've actually changed my mind since about 12 o'clock this afternoon. I
hard to believe that Mark Farnsworth doesn't know how to break on his own table and his own club. We're playing on a brand new Simonis 861 cloth, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, uh, Mark, Mark Ball was saying yesterday that the cloth and the table is playing beautifully. It's playing as a touch table. He says you don't have to punch anything. And, and you can see that, that shot kind of epitomizes it where he just drifts the ball in. He lets the cue ball do all of the work. And that's what we're going to see from him. Mark Farnsworth, I called him the clinician at the top of the at the top of the game because he really is. There's no one quite as clinical. I, I'd say his cue ball is 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 up there with the best. I'd say that maybe one player that I might put ahead of him is, is Phil Harrison on cue ball control, but there's nothing in it. I mean, Mark Farnsworth is up there. You know, he and and as a result, he doesn't really need to pull out any ridiculous. You know. He maybe hasn't got the firepower of a, of a Tom Cousins in, in terms of potting, um, but he doesn't need it because his, his cue ball is just exemplary. So there's there's definitely a contrast in styles between the two players. Um, I'm all I'm already surprised that um, there's been three visits to this table. Uh, Mark Boyle obviously ha um, was that I, I missed it. Was it a bounce out or was it a, was it an actual miss? No. So um, Mark broke part of the ball, missed his first ball. Yeah. Um, and then Mark missed straight after that and yeah. obviously Boyle stepped in to, yeah. Yeah. to take these out and that's uh, that, that really is a, a surprise and, yeah, and so even even here he's just off angle he's okay um, but he probably just want to be a fraction straighter no he was okay and uh, the start Shane I mean you've been in, in these situations and these long race money matches you know people can argue the start's almost irrelevant because it's a race of 31 so you know what does it matter whether it's 3-2 or 4-1 but but how important is the start the first five frames yeah you need you need to start well you need to get get yourself in a rhythm and a bit, bit of confidence you don't want to be letting your opponent win the first three or four frames because you're, you're going to end up on putting yourself under pressure so um it's it's, it's 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 all about the start you need a good start definitely one unforced error each but it does look like Mr. Boyle is going to open us up. And we're just going to take a look at Mark Boyle's bio. So Mark Boyle, 41 years of age, as we heard at the top from Denny and Falkirk. He plays out of the Players' Lounge, which is uh, Stephen Addison's club. He uses a John Paris cue. Obviously, uh, comes from a snooker background, and that's why we talk about his touch play. And his, uh, I, I, I mean, he's just got a lovely, a lovely stroke, um, a, a medium size, a medium size tip. I, I guess just slightly above average. The average I'd say is probably eight no, eight point two five, so just slightly bigger. Um, and obviously, the, the, the greatest achievements. I mean, he's won an absolute plethora of, um, of titles, including IPA Pro and Open titles. Um, biggest achievement being the IPA Premier League champion. Hard to find any fault in the fundamentals of Mark Boyle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a, a, as a young as a young person uh, approaching the game, um, you would be very hard pressed to find somebody else that you could that, that, that you could um, uh, reflect their game. And, and he really just does have the full package. First look at Mr. Farnsworth's break. I did see him practicing the side break, but he's gone for the front ball, and I liked what I saw. Yeah, that was Hit very that quite good. well. That was very good. So the yellows, um, the yellows must be the ball here. Uh, the yellow at the top right of the table dictating the play here. He, he has an opener on either, but uh, I think that those two balls converging at the top right to of the table honest, is, is I think I think reds are the balls here the, the, red, the red up the rail goes off the yellow it opens oh, up the other red yeah, they, uh, yeah I, see, I think I think they're gone that's why you're the pundit I'm going to play stooge to you today Shane <laughs> that's why we brought him in yeah exactly so I did that on purpose you see because I, I just wanted to just give Ch Shane a, a chance to shine there look at that excuses <laughs> that. I suppose Shane in Beautiful these shout. in these long races all you're really looking for, we're going to have a break after I think 30 frames. 30 frames, yeah. But you're just aiming to be within three or four. You, yeah, you want to be. You're going to be behind. You, you either want to be 30 in front, 
or you want or you want to be yeah ju- if you're behind you want to be just behind you know what I mean you don't want to be you don't want to be 10 frames behind that's for sure do you feel the gap changes dramatically when it's sort of two breaks a serve um, that when it's that pressure will start to build you know if you're two breaks a serve behind I, I guess so I mean a lot of time when you're, you're playing on a, a mat cloth obviously the, the table slows down a bit after a certain amount of frames and the break might be a bit different but on this cloth I mean I've not played on this a lot I, I've played one event on it and I'm not sure whether well it doesn't slow down does it it stays the same so I'm, I'm guessing the, the breaks will always be pretty similar um, throughout the game so um, if, if your opponent's not breaking that well then you've got a chance when you're three or four frames behind both of these players are very comfortable with this cloth yeah. the tour that they play on uses this cloth I think obviously it's a napless cloth and I the main wanna, difference being is I just want to quickly point out that uh, Mark's taking reds here I just want to I want to put that out there <laughs> who, who would have thought that eh? <laughs> professional players are in agreement on colour sets unbelievable <laughs> sorry David I cut you off in your prime there <laughs> You've lost me, yeah. So the other main difference with this cloth is for doubles. When you play a double, it tends to check up a little bit. Okay. I, I noticed that earlier actually when Mark was practicing. Um, he was he was practicing his doubles. Some were sliding, and when he hits them a bit, like punching them in, he, he, they were straightening up too much. So um, it would be interesting to see how, how they both adapt to the to the doubles. And you find the opinions on the A61 cloth are very divided, yeah. and it's very strong the opinion either way. Some people love, some people yeah. hate. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've only played one event on it, and I wasn't a fan. But I didn't play on a brand new one, so I mean, looking at this, I probably prefer to play on this. Like, like Nick said earlier, it's a touch table, it, it's quick, and that, that's that's my game. So yeah. I, I wouldn't mind it. You're another touch player, Shane. It, it, this would definitely suit your game. I think. Yeah, yeah. So. All you guys watching at home, you are in the box seat. There is no better seat in the house. I mean, there are people all around the table from every vantage point. But you guys have the box seat with us. If you're watching on YouTube, just be aware that uh, YouTube is going to go dark after three frames. This is a pay-per-view event. Uh, we had a free match last night, but this one is a pay-per-view. Uh, you can sign up for it at beerproductionsppv.com. Um, if you sign up for it, you also get put into the draw. Um, we've got some wonderful prizes coming out, including a, uh, a Johnny Carr handmade cue, a Sam Sprackman handmade break cue, along with a, a set of Aramith balls. And uh, yeah, s- s- some really good prizes, uh, including a, um, also a Hainsworth ma- match cloth. Uh, yeah, a set so, of balls, and yeah. most importantly, yeah, you missed the beer production t-shirts. Absolutely. Yeah, that's gonna be the first prize that everyone chooses. Um, <laughs> but of course, that uh, that Johnny met. Jo- Johnny was uh, on comms yesterday. He said he work, he'll work with uh, the winner to, to choose exactly the cue they want. I mean, that's worth ten pounds. Um, without the fact that you're just about to to have about eight or nine hours of, of fabulous entertainment. So, do head across to beerproductionsppv.com. Uh, we will be going dark on YouTube after three frames. It's one frame each. Mark Farnsworth, age 44 from Sunderland. He's playing out of his home club, the Sky Lounge. What a club it is as well. It's fantastic. It's a great setup in here. Um, his cue, I love that. <laughs> uh, and there's so many players that have that. The old rack cue. It's no branding whatsoever. He's just had it adjusted to suit him. 7.2 mil tip in contrast to Mark Boyles. You can tell that Mark's got that uh, snooker background with the 8.65. That's a small tip. I'm shocked by that. Yeah. I've never noticed that before yeah. with Barnsworth's Q. Did you know it was so small? Oh, I knew it was small, but I didn't think it'd be that small, to be fair. And of course, uh, tiny. Of course, the greatest achievement in Paul, the IPA World Champion 2019. So, yeah, just, just going to that tip size is interesting. You say it, it, it's tiny. It really is on the very small side. There's not many players that are down near 7 mil. And the, the difference is with a, um, between a, I mean, we talked about Shane and, um, and Mark Boyle being touch players. Shane uh, uses a, a 9.9 millimeter tip, yep. which is very much on the larger side, um, and that favours touch players. It's the players who want to, to move the cue ball around more. The difference is with a small tip, obviously the surface area in contact with the cue ball is much smaller. 
So any kind of any kind of just slightly offline queuing exacerbates the spin on the ball. So you have to be that much more accurate. I, th I think Nick and Shane will probably elaborate a little bit further, but it comes down to simple physics. Brings the tip right back yeah, onto yeah, his yeah, hand, yeah, yeah. and his yeah. hand's quite far away from the cue ball anyway. You know, Chris Mellon, another one. Yeah. Then a big tip just doesn't matter because you, you, you're queuing so solidly through the cue ball. Yeah, it's all about finding the middle of the white, to be fair. Yeah. Um, obviously, and the bigger tip, the, big, the bigger area you're hitting on the white. So. And Shane loves a big tip. So anyway, Mark Boyle, second successful break of the match, and uh, he's in amongst the balls again. Chooses red. No, no issues here. Um, obviously, he would have gone yellows, but the eight ball doesn't go past the red. So, yeah, reds all day long. Maybe just finished a, a touch straighter on this than he would have liked. Um, needs to really punch this to, to get the cue ball back out. And there you can see, really... Look at how yeah, easy that beautiful. was to play. Quite possibly, he may have landed a little bit awkward here. Just taking his time round the table. But the middle of the three, I think passes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I don't think the, the bottom one doesn't go, does it? Uh, I don't assume so. The yeah, middle of the three cuts past the yellow. The just losing his cue ball yeah. a little bit. But can he just drop it in? Yeah, he will hold on the red and, and be on a choice of two. But obviously he doesn't want to hit the red too hard because the red could go up towards them two yellows. He wants to play his dead weight. Yeah, he would have, he would have loved another couple of rolls of, uh, of the cue ball there just to get a little bit straighter. Just that, that middle one of the three, as you say, pushing into that red, it, it, it could put him in trouble. And that, that's the only reason he's really hesitating on this. If he was straighter, he'd have already, already played it. But didn't he yeah, judge that well? that well? Played that really well. Because now that red now passes the yellow in the middle. So he'll drop this one in bottom left, right middle, come up for the gap, and then have a choice of two then. He, he worked that out really well. I could tell you now this I mean this place is just packed to the rafters it's going to be carnage here later on once this gets to the business end uh, the atmosphere in here is just going to rev up hour upon hour and I think come the conclusion of the game tonight if it's a close one this will be absolutely buzzing you do not want to miss this action it's only two o'clock in the afternoon and we've already had renditions of Neil Diamond Arctic Monkeys and the Fratellis <laughs> And lads have been in here since 8 o'clock drinking a Peroni. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be bouncing. They're going to raise the roof later. Just a little reminder to the viewers on YouTube, this will be our last frame. Head over to Beer Productions PPV if you'd like to watch the remainder of this match. See the slide off that rail then. For, for a table that's two or three weeks old, that's still sliding quite a bit. So I, I, I don't think a lot of people have been on this table. I think Mark's kept this table clean for himself. I think it's probably just him and Gav that have been practicing yeah, for the last yeah. couple of weeks. And, and who can blame them? Yeah, absolutely. But that's three frames and two break dishes. Yeah. So, guys, YouTube is going to go dark now, so just be, be aware of that. And um, you can catch the action as it is on the screen there. Beer Productions, ppv.com. Get yourself in that draw for that Johnny Car queue and the Dr. Q break queue, amongst other prizes. Um, and 
as I say, the rest of this match is going to be fantastic. Do not miss out. Head across Beer Productions PPV, and we'll see you over there. I think after that opening frame, it's nice to see both players have now really settled into this match. You can just see, you can. Both players are now fully focused. Unusual to see an unforced error from both in the opening frame. Can't say we've Un seen many more. Uh, unusual, but but I mean, not. I mean, even at this level, these guys have been there. They've done it. They've lifted many a trophy. But there's still going to be some nerves jangling there. I mean, they've, they've had to walk on. They've got into the you know they've got in the, into the arena. The expectations there, the money the, from the backers. And, you know, Mark Boyle is going to want to do it just to get the second one on the board. He'll want to do it for Lola. And Mark Farnsworth, he just wants to get revenge. So there's going to be some nerves in there for absolute certain. And there's another break from Mark Farnsworth. And success again. Yeah. Uh, lost cue ball a little bit up towards that top right pocket. The, the ball just heading towards, but it, it got kicked away, so he's fine. If, he, um, if he's got a little bit of angle on this red on the top rail, he'll, he'll definitely be going red here. Yeah, all about the first shot. If you can get yeah. the, play this and get the cue ball out, then then everything's there, isn't it? And, and, and the red over the bag you know, obviously helps with the the red on the right hand side. So I, I can't see any problems here unless he's dead straight. I, would, I think he's got a bit of angle, but it's it depends what he can do with it. Do you know what, Shane? I don't. I, I think all he's looking at doing is taking his medicine, dropping it in, running the cue ball through a couple of inches, and then take the red long down to the bottom of the table. Yeah. Because I don't think I think it's a little bit straight for him to get out. I, I think I'd rather screw back out. And play the the plant down the road. Play the plant, yeah. yeah, yeah. He ha he has got the option just to push through and play the plant if he chooses. Yeah. Well, oh, maybe. I, I just think it, it was easier for, for screwing out. I, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slag him for for a shot selection because he's one of the best in the world. But I, I think if he would have screwed it back out, it was a lot easier. Does it make the pot more difficult? Well, now it does, yeah, and, and controlling the white as well. See, mm. oh, that has forced the miss. I didn't anticipate that, I must say. But as we mentioned in the, a couple of minutes ago, there's bound to be some early nerves. It's going to take a while to settle. He's got a big crowd, a big home crowd, and there's a lot of uh, anticipation, a lot of weight on his shoulders. He's carrying this whole club on his shoulders. And uh, I defy anybody not to have a little bit of nerve. It's hard to quantify the amount of pressure on these boys' shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But um, the yellow's not, not without problems. We've got these um, two yellows that are closest to us at this end of the table. Neither of those pot into their respective pockets, so... He's going to have to find a way, conjure up something to be able to develop one of those. The other one does pot into a couple of pockets, but the one on the left he needs to do something with. And this is what you'll see from both players. Right at the, uh, the opening, they, they take their time to map the table. They're not, they're not slow players, but they will take their time at the, at the, at the outset just to make sure that they've got it exactly how That's they want it. That's a great shot. What a super shot that is. Brilliant. He's cued that so well. He, he does all the time though, doesn't he? Delightful timing, look at this. No effort. Absolutely no effort whatsoever. Yeah, he's just looking now that he can take that yellow. So looking at the angle that he wants to get he can he can get somewhere down there from the ball nearest the middle not the next shot but later in this uh, in this break he, he may elect to try and get over there now play this one to bottom left with with, with rates of left hand side and just push that cue ball yeah, over I, I don't I'm think not, I'm not sure he can no. get over there no no bit too thin yeah I think he's got yeah. to play this one and go up and then back down again yeah I mean ideally you would like that yellow to go right into the jaws of the pocket and then he could have played a double but he's got a difficult shot to play here. He might be tempted to take the one on the balk line and open up the eight ball. I think the eight goes. 
Was it? I think so. He looked at it. Look at the check he side he's putting on this. But you see the slide on it still. Yeah. Still slid. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So I, think, I think the, the yellow on the on the bolt rail, uh, on the bolt line, and nudge into the red above it, just to open. I mean, give himself a bit more room to get on the eight. Yeah. Because the eight does look like it goes from here. It's close. It is close. I mean, if it doesn't go, then he can use the one. He can play the one um, in the middle at the bottom of our screen, and then nudge nudge the black or the red out of the way, and still be on the yellow in the middle. Yeah. Looks tighter than a fish's eye. That eight ball. Yeah, to it me, does. Man. Yeah, yeah. But the way he was pointing his cue then was like he was trying to go into the red. That's got to be a that's got to be a Macclesfield thing. Now, well, never heard that. There's plenty of them to come. <laughs> got a whole long list of them for you, Nick. Uh, brilliant. I'm gonna I'm gonna write them down and start using them. They all get nicked. <laughs> so apologies to anybody who's been having any early audio issues. Um, they've all been sorted now. So keeping tabs on things, and there's also uh, the beer production support as well. Frank is sat here ready to help you if. Uh, if you should need it. So that, that tells me that that eight ball didn't pass. And that is a great shot. Yeah, he's played that well. And he's got the perfect angle now by the look of it, just to drift down onto this onto this yellow on the right-hand side. So far, this has been an exemplary visit to the table. Yeah. He's not had one simple shot. Yeah, he, can just, he can just play this and just drift down to where his, his cue is now to take that yellow into the middle. And that, that really was so well planned. That that shot that I mean it tells you that the eight didn't go so now it certainly does when you looked at this table three visits ago three shots ago you can't believe where he is now he's just opened up the whole table yeah this table's quick yeah yeah it, it definitely just over hit that slightly he's, as you yeah as he's, he's he's just landed a little bit awkward because he's not going to be able to get close to his last yellow yeah I can't see him chancing going around the back of the red. No, he's, no. he's taking this long. He's taking it long and the, and the white and finish up by the middle, bo uh, middle pocket. Yeah, I think he has to. These are difficult. Yeah, the, 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 there's too much angle to, to take it to middle. And you don't want to be taking it to middle and, and screwing off the side cushion because then you're risking the banks. I was about to say, ah. we're going to see how well he's feeling, because them sort of shots, they test you. It was a tester, but it's one I very much expected him to get. I think, you know, 20 frames in, yeah, he's, he's left in this, the opening four or five. He's left this perfect for Mark as well, hasn't he? He's left the perfect angle on the one on the bulk line to come through the gap to, te to take the other ball in bulk, and then everything's there. He's left it absolutely perfect for Mark Farnsworth. Just let the cue ball drift naturally. And again, just just maybe just a touch under where he wanted it, but that's fine. I mean, he can do this one of two ways. He can he can either check it or he can screw around the eight ball. There's enough room behind it to get around it. Yeah, he wants to find a gap. I'll be leaving the one over the right centre because yeah. he's uh, his last colour, I'm sure. And this is a chance I don't think Mark Farnsworth would have anticipated. I, he was thinking in his mind, I'm, you know, mentally 3-1 down here because I think he would have expected Mark Ball to get those. Yeah, it was a big let off, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So he'll be relieved and he'll be he'll be very buoyed by that. Especially seeing the chink in the armor. It's always a nice it's always nice to see the chink in the opponent's armor armor early doors, just to know that. You know he's not infallible. There are some mistakes in him. It, there's nothing. There's nothing worse than. Look, last night was a perfect example. Gav was, Gav was perfection in those first four or five frames, and he was relentless. And he just didn't give, didn't give Tom any 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 choices, any options. And there were no chinks in his armor. So, you know, mentally you're just thinking, wow, I really need to put. And it puts the pressure on your opponent. And this is exactly what this is going to do. It's it's going to put the pressure back on Mark Boyle. So this is an important exchange. Even though it's very early in the match, an important exchange, and it's two frames each. 
we will be back in just a second. So Shane, I think we've had two unforced errors each yep. so far. Now when you're playing these long matches, obviously you're aware of you know, the effect you can have on your opponent and how they're feeling, but do you keep track in your mind of unforced errors? Nah, I think if, if Mark would have lost that frame, I think he might have had a little, I mean a little worried himself about the, the plant down the rail that he missed. But no, nah, when it's so early in a match, I think when you get 15, 20 frames in, I think you just forget about it. Well, you have to forget about it, otherwise it's going to play on your mind the whole, the whole match. So you, you have to forget about it. He'll definitely feel upset about it, Mark Boyle, there, because he had the hard work done in the finish. Yeah. yeah. Gave himself the chance, just wasn't able to finish it off. So again, we see this cut break from Mark Boyle. We're going to see this throughout the match. He won't change it. The only thing he may change is, is change sides, but uh, he does this as well as anybody. And of course, the commentator's curse kicks in and uh, that's, a, that's a dry break. I mean, that's bound to happen after I just said it's, uh, it's an absolute cannon of a break. But the power he gets on it, how it defies the, the, the laws, of, um, the laws of, of, of gravity because that, that cue ball should be launched off the table. If I played at that pace, it would be gone. It'd be, it'd be through the window. You're just happy to hit the pack, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> just happy to hit the white. <laughs> Shane talking about centre ball queuing. Nick uses a 20 mil tip. <laughs> it's the only way I can find <laughs> centre ball. I'm not getting involved in this conversation. <laughs> You are right though, I think Mark Boyle probably was the first person to play the cut break at the pace that he plays it. And uh, it is quite special, I've tried it, it's very, very difficult. Yeah, it looks simple, but I challenge, uh, challenge the guys at home to, to replicate it. Just finished the touch straight here, don't think he's got the angle to be able to punch down table. So yeah, the only, the only, if he's playing the one along the cushion here, the only way is backwards, unfortunately. Yeah. He's going to have to take his medicine yeah, and bring the cue ball back a couple of inches and drop the yellow in the middle. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's forced an angle yeah. instead of just a little bit. So what's the plan, Shane? I think the, the yellow that's over the right middle, I think he can use to just come through the gap and nudge the red away from the yellow. Yeah. Um, and then he's got a choice of two then. But um, he needs to be kind of where the yellow is in the middle of the table. He's gone too far there. Unless, unless this, yeah, he could play it here. I, don't, I think a bit straight actually. Unless he fancies stunning this long one in, well, half long one, into the bottom right and then playing the double. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at now. So he's looking now, but it looks... If he does play the long one, or the longish one, he's uh, going to be slightly hindered by the red with his queuing. I think, I think he needs to reroute here. I, th I think that'll help him though, because he, he, has to stun, he has to stun this double in because they're sliding a hell of a lot. This, this, this is what I was thinking, that he needs to, he needs to reroute. He needs to play the, the yellow to right centre and then come up and leave the angle on the one further up the table. Because I don't, I don't see how else comes down to so say the red only needs a nudge full ball nudge and he's going to be left on the yellow into center he was betwixt and between wasn't he because he, if he's a roll less he's on the one in the the middle with the angle if he's a roll more he's on the one to bottom right with the angle yeah but yeah he's having a reroute this is the what i mentioned so leaving the angle now on this one to left center yeah that's pretty good yeah that looks perfect 
harder to judge now though isn't it yeah it's, it's easier to judge from the other you don't want to be hitting the yellow yeah yeah any contact on the yellow and, uh, and its curtains so what he's looking for here is full ball contact on the red yeah that's nope. not what you want oh, nope. but he's I, I think he's landed it. okay I think he's actually landed okay if he's got an angle on this yellow he can screw into that yellow on the rail never ideal when you're trying to cannon onto a ball that you want to land on no of course yeah. no of course but so he, he, has, has. he has nothing else is there room for it to double? I don't think there is. No, no. He's got the angle. Doesn't want to hit this too hard, you feel. Well, he'll take that. Wow. Does it, does it go past the red, though? Does it go? That looks really tight. Yeah, I'm not too sure if it goes or not. I don't think, I don't think you get a ball through no, there. No, I don't think. No, definitely not. No. He's normally so good at these developing shots. There's a couple there that have just gone wrong. I'm not saying that um, they weren't tricky. They were both tricky. Well, obviously felt there was nothing else no. worthy than just a hit and hope. Yeah. It's not often you'll ever see him do that. No. He, w he wouldn't have been doing that later on in the game. I know that for a fact. He, he, he probably would have just played a one down a row and covered the bag or tried to cover the bag. Probably uses, well, I was about to say, will he use his free shot just to open the red up at the bottom of the table? Get he, it off the cushion? He is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Not, it, to, it, not it, to plan, but... It shouldn't matter. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't, but... It'll just annoy him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that'd be annoying, yeah. As long as he's not straight here. Not straight here. Just yeah, enough, okay. I think. Yeah, just enough. Okay. He's got a punch out. Obviously, the yellow doesn't pass the eight, so... He's fine. Beautifully struck by the Scotsman. Not come out far enough though. He, he would have liked to have been a bit straight on this one in the middle. He just drift the cue ball through the gap, up and down. Yeah, yes, yeah, drift up and back down. Yeah. A bit, little bit of run inside. Oh, no side. Okay. Mm, it works, it could have gone wrong. Yeah, run inside would have helped there. Early signs that Mark Boyle probably just hasn't quite got the run of the table yet. The sliding off the cushions and the pace, just catching him out a little bit more than Farnsworth. Yeah. Which you'd expect, obviously yeah, with course. home advantage. Yeah. Away venue, different table. Has had a couple of hours on the table this morning. Yeah, he was trying to figure his break out because where he normally breaks from, um, you know, like the the, the black uh, plastic on the top of the pockets, it's a little bit higher than what he's used to. And obviously his cue normally goes across the top of that, the, the black rim. And he said he just couldn't do it. He's having to tighten his fingers up. And so he's ended up moving it slightly uh, different direction. So, um, yeah, he was trying to work on that when I was in here earlier. Drop this in. I mean, I guess it's just personal choice. Or do you punch it up and get the cue ball right at the table? Yeah, just let, let your arm right go. And yeah, loosen up a little bit. Yeah. And even Nick with his 20 mil tip would get this one. I'm not so sure. Anyway, it's three frames to two. seeing the advert there uh, just a shout out for um, Dr Q good friend of mine Sam Sprackman he's um, re recently started up in uh, full time making 
handmade cues and um, if you want something a little bit special then, then Sam Germain he does all kinds of wizardry with uh, with splices and and uh, always kind of kind of trying to invent uh, um, new cues and come up with new ideas and also his um, his break cue is, uh, is popular worth trying out so Mark Farnsworth breaking in frame number six and the scoreline just reflective of um, of um, just going with the serve at the moment even though a couple of frames have gone against the serve the scoreline is very much on serve oh that's very unlucky and what a break that is as well that's huge. We, 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 we questioned his break early doors and whether it, it was going to be the, the difference I mean we're already seeing he is timing that ball beautifully and that is a great break so unfortunate to get kicked in, in off will be frustrating but I mean conversely whilst he's frustrated with the result he will be buoyed by the fact that his break is working yeah because th there are question marks over it and, and a lot of people are saying that you know his break could make the difference he will be very buoyed by the fact that it really really is working for him today Gav Robinson was saying yesterday that um, the table can be a bit funny he said he came down here playing like a couple of weeks ago and he could not miss off the break and then the next couple of sessions he had, he, he just couldn't pop one off the front. So, you know, it, it, as always, it's very much on the day how well you're timing it. Sometimes the conditions can play a part as well. It's going to be warmer in here today, and that can really affect the way the table plays, the way the cloth pay, plays. It's probably going to be four or five degrees warmer than it normally would be. There's a lot of bodies packed into here, so that's going to take the temperature up. And that can have an effect on the way the table plays and breaks. Yeah, usually the warmer the table, the quicker it plays. So, um, yeah, it could catch the lads out today. There's a lot of bodies in here. I mean, putting the scoreline line aside, Shane, who would you say you think has, has settled the better at the moment? Um, I'd probably say Boyle has, has settled a little better um, but it's, it's still early days you know what I mean it's, it's not, it's not going to take long before Mark like, it's, it's Mark's home venue it's his crowd it's not going to take long before he gets a couple more frames on the board and you know what I mean he, he, he could run away with it you never know um, but at the moment I think Mark's had a bit Boyle's had a bit more table time he, he looks a bit more more in the game sort of thing, you know what I mean? Both of these players are just so mentally strong, they play like androids. I mean, consistency. Yeah. You just never get anything below 90%, ever. So these two, the, the, the most recent uh, they played was... was last weekend uh, on the on the um, on the tour um, when Mark Boyle won that one eight frames to four do you think that plays any kind of mental part is there any kind of any kind of psychological advantage to be had from that probably best asking yeah. Shane that not, really. not, not in my opinion every every match is different and, and the way the standard of pool at the, at, like these days anyone can beat anyone at that level um, so it None of them would care. He could have won eight nil, and and Farzad wouldn't have wouldn't have cared less. Yeah. Obviously, at the time he would have because he lost, but it wouldn't ever matter in a game like this. No. Yeah, I don't think you can take anything from what is relatively a short race. Races to seven, races to eight is the most you ever see on a tour event. Yeah, yeah. And you just can't take anything from it because a seven nil victory can be three dry breaks and one error. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, this is why we play these long races to 31, because uh, those kind of things even out over the, the duration of the match. Well, you'd like to think so, anyway. That said, I do believe if you're playing off scratch like these two are, 31 is just ridiculous. I think 20, 25 is, is enough, but 31 seems to be the magic number. 
So Mark Boyle gets that break of serve. All important break of serve is four frames to two up. And he's breaking next. So a chance to get three ahead. Always trying to punish your opponent twice. Wow. Finds a ball, finds a, a red. And, these, um, yeah, these, these are beautiful. These yellows are gone. Yeah. The yellows look an absolute delight. Separation in the colour sets off the break make the finish a lot easier. Yeah, there's one, one yellow in the middle of three balls. Um, which would be half tricky to get on and get back out, but you know, with someone as good as Mark, he's that's not a worry. He got it straight away. Now play the yellow in the middle, and, and he's bang on it. A couple of yellows over the bag, so he ain't got to worry. Yeah. If the yellow that's in the middle of those three balls pass the eight in the middle then I'm these are guessing, even easier I'm mm. guessing it much yeah much the way he's played that yeah does it pass to the right centre yeah definitely I think And if, uh, if he can clear these, it's, um, it's going to be a telling little lead, early doors. He'll be delighted if he takes these out. First yeah. seven to be five, two up. I, I, I was thinking about that uh, IPA scoreline of 8-4. I mean, Mark Boyle would definitely take that in the first 12 frames, wouldn't he? He, yeah. would, he would be over the moon with that start. Things can change very quickly. Oh, we know. We know. We've seen it many, many times. I mean, it's only one break of serve. I mean, these are simple, but it's nice to see him taking his time. He doesn't, just because they're easy, he doesn't, you know, fasten yeah. his pace. Yeah, we, we, we saw up his pace at We all. saw Gav Robinson do the same thing yesterday, really playing a measured game. And uh, you're absolutely right. Just give every single shot the respect it deserves. And Mark's got, Mark's got a great cadence. He, he will just keep up this, this pace right the way throughout the match. You won't see him speed up if he's eight frames ahead you won't see him slow down he will just keep this very same cadence all the way through it's not slow it's just a it's just a measured you know just making sure he's settled making sure he's right before he gets down and pulls the trigger he's got a routine and yeah. that routine is very very important both of these players take emotion just completely out of their games and just try and play like a robot I suppose everything exactly the same every shot delightful stuff from uh, Mark Boyle and this is exactly the start that he would have wanted He's three frames ahead leaving five frames to two Mark Farnsworth really didn't do much wrong to get those three frames behind either he got kicked in off and, and that is very much the difference between the two players
Deck Brennan up in the uh, that, that, that up, in, up, in, up in the worlds, and he, uh, he went happy. He walked off. <laughs> Naughty little finish. I think I think Paul put it up on the socials. I went up to Brennan. I went, "Oh, have you seen this today?" He went, "What's that?" So I showed him the video, and he just walked <laughs> off. Didn't even speak to me. Just going up a notch, trying to get Mark Farnsworth back into this match. But as loud as they are, they can't help him get a ball over the. Can't help him get a ball off the break. The misery continues. Not done too much in the way of um, of damage. I suggest he probably wants reds here, Shane. Yeah, he would. Yeah, a um, couple of couple of dodgy reds, but yeah, I think with the red being over the the bottom right pocket, as we look, then uh, yeah, he definitely wants reds. There's nothing worse than a dry break and and, and leaving your opponent rollings, and these definitely aren't rolling. So nah. I think you could see Mark just touching up to his red here. I'm not sure he's even on over red, is he? I think he's the, the, Tough the one red at the, at the top. That's yeah, right. I think that red goes um, top left or top right. Yeah, it's just whether he can get to the centre of the cue ball. Looks okay. And he's going to take it to top right. No. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. Having having watched last night. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did you think yes yeah, as well? No, yeah, I did, yeah. As, soon, as soon as he hit the rail, I knew it was going in because Shut we, that again. We, I, I watched the game last night and we, it was exactly you, the same. We can tell you didn't watch last night because no, I didn't. Because <laughs> I knew as soon as he hit that, that was going in. Yeah. <laughs> the pace alone. It, it's one of them tables, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's it, it's a new cloth. It's um, yeah, it, it, it's playing big for sure. Let's be clear here that um, you know. This is a standard supreme table, you know. I mean, people say, "Look at the size of the pockets." I mean, I mean, by all means, go to Supreme and say, "Could I have one of those tables, one of those match tables with the big pockets?" And they'll probably laugh at you. Um, but but tables do play bigger when they have that that new slidey cloth that Shane mentioned earlier. Um, and this is this is exactly the same template as any table you'll get down your local club, but it's got a brand new cloth on it and um, it plays big. And there's also a double set of lights above it as well. With, yeah, we, I mean it's a lot, it's a lot warmer up there. We said that, yeah, we said that earlier, didn't we? And, and that also, that also um, changes the the dynamics and makes it play bigger when the table's warmer. People always say the arena table plays massive, you know, when when we're at events, it does because you know it, 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 they they play big because it's a, a warmer environment in an in an arena with all the lights and the people in there. Anyway, I mean, we put that down as a, an unforced error from, from Boyle. That was a tough little shot he took on there. It was tough, but it was a long way away. Yeah, it was I a long way honest. away, yeah. Yeah, that's a good shot. Taking a bit of control. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those tables that uh, you just can't go all out attack. You're better off just getting some control in the game while you can um, it, it buys you the time to then develop the rest of the table for yourself and it's a clever little shot as well because you know what's he left here maybe just a little gap no, he's yeah just going to nudge that yellow in and try and buy himself that same adva advantage a little bit of tactical game we love a tactical game you don't get too many in these sets of rules, in these more modern attacking sets of rules, but the occasional, the occasional uh, tactical frame has a lot of merit to it. To see how the players' brains work, to give them, to allow them to express their B game. It's not often we get a chance to see it, but 
you have to remember these players are really clever and really cunning as well. You know, they've got great pool, pool brains. You can learn a lot from, play, from, from the way these guys play a tactical game. Both players with plenty of headaches here. Neither will be willing to pop balls. Yeah, that's the thing though, isn't it? I mean, Mark Farnsworth wants to wants to develop a couple of balls, but at the same time, he wants to leave the Reds tied up. So it's a, it, it's a little bit of, um, you know, as I say, this is when you really see their brains working. But the thing is, well, both pockets aren't actually covered fully. There is gaps in both pockets, yeah. so they have to be careful. Wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have wanted a double kiss there. He just wanted to nudge that out into the open and um, and cover this red at the top of the table as well. Um, that was just a little bit careless because that double kiss is well, really just turned that into a nothing shot. Cause he was trying to develop that yellow. I think they read this above the yellow on the right hand side. I think they'll be doubling that out towards the bottom rail. And then that's a ball then you can use to open that pocket up. Like you say, it's headaches both sides, but you've got to start making moves. Yeah, I mean, this, this is really a game of chess. What, what you're doing here, you're, you're, not, you're not looking for checkmate early doors you're looking at you're looking at how you can how you can develop the situation to ah. get it into your favor i think he went for the pot there but he'd be quite yeah. happy because he's covered the path for the yellow up into the top right hand pocket giving mark farms with even more problems I'm, I'm trying to decide looking at the table shane what color would you rather be here i'd rather be reds yeah reds all day long yeah yeah I said there's a gap underneath that yellow for, for a red to creep in and, and open the bag up um, but there's nothing there on yellows to open up that that bottom right you know what I mean so no that's a good shot I wonder if Boyle fancies the, the double will open it up. That would. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he's got the angle to play the double. Yeah, and the other thing is, does he do it while that red's still tied up on the oh, left I'm thinking now, I, I, I'd probably get that out and leave the, the white bottom rail. Just, just get the red out, leave the white bottom rail. Yeah, you need to you need to manipulate a ball across that side of the table, don't you? So why not do it now? Exactly. I don't think I still don't think this is the time to pull the trigger. This is still about just manoeuvring a ball to the right place. Well, Shane was right. There is a gap behind that yellow, but it's not that big enough to squeeze a ball in. He could play the... Will he be tempted to play the double on the red on the other side of the table? No. Just that red above the yellow, he could play the double on that one if he chose. Going up the table. I, I assume he's got a plan in mind there. Yeah. Screwing straight. In, yeah, I don't know. It's a big shot. That's a big ask. Yeah. I mean, he's got he's got the angle, but it's it's to, to get that shot and to get the white out onto the next red. You've really got to give it some here. He's got the cue action to get enough 
Oh, for sure. To, to get enough action on the cue ball, but yeah. to get that red out and to get the white back out after that. Oh, wow. How unlucky was that? Wow. Can he still... Oh. Does that red slide in behind the yellow? It does, but he, he's not on it now. But he, Yeah, and he's not on anything else, not I don't think. Else. Just oh. look at the action he gets on that cue ball. Where that comes to rest is so unlucky. Yeah, he just... The trouble is he doesn't want to touch up behind this red because Mark can play the yellow and, and cover the bag even more. I wonder if you can cut that top that top red in the corner. Oh, I don't like this. Nestle him up. Yeah, I don't like that. If he's left that touching ball, then he's had a result. If not, then he's in a he could be in a bit of trouble. It's touching ball. He's had a bit of a result there, I think. Touching the yellow, not the yeah, red. Touching the yellow, yeah. And we're just going to see Mark move that cue ball about an inch into I the cushion. I think he's going to push the red up towards the yellow by the black and leave the white bottom rail. Just to tie another red up and, and not really leave. I mean, both reds don't really go, do they? So... If he can get to the red by that top pocket, he might even be able to double the, the red across and get the white out of the top of the table. Yeah. I think he can see it. Yeah, I think he can see it. And that's what he's playing, Shane. No. That's a great shot. That'll do. That's a great shot. Or oh, as he left it as he left on this rubber angle. Left it. I think he's left it and he's left the angle. Because any any touch on them two reds and yeah. that, that yellow's in. Yeah, this Man. shot is well and truly on. That's unlucky. It is. And you fancy I mean this is a big target as well. You fancy Mark Boyle to um, to get this. Just looking at it, it's all about the contact. He needs to contact that ball. He doesn't want to contact from underneath and leave the cue ball at this. He needs on, to go cushion, cushion. He needs to go cushion first. Cushion first and then like flick up the up the red. Yeah, yeah. Lots and lots of right hand side. The key shot in this frame number eight coming up. Oh white just about stays on the table and I think he'll be happy with this. Yeah, if he yeah, can play. Plan. If he can play the plant, yeah, he's yeah, that's nice. That, play the plant and just run the cue ball through a couple of inches. Look at this cue ball. I thought it was going to drop for a second. Ooh, that's how reactive the table is because he's he's hardly really hit that, has he? And he's got into that so much. Already a big frame. A big frame, six two. It's a big frame for Mark yeah. Farnsworth. Yeah. Two or five, three. It's a big gap. Four frames. I mean, he's way too experienced to be panicking at this early stage, sure. even with a four-frame gap. But he must be feeling it. I think he's just worried here about the pace he's going to play the plan. He needs to play a little bit harder, so just to make sure that red comes away from the yellow above it. Yeah. I think the pace he has to play out to get on the next red anyway is, is fine. He's playing it in the cushion. No, he's not. Oh. Oh. Wow. Do you know, it, the way he was playing across the ball, it just, I don't know, it looked for a second that he was playing to cushion, but he needed to, I mean, 
he could have hit that way thinner yeah, yeah, yeah. and still made yeah. it way thinner he, I thought he was going to just drop the plant in and then play the red that's underneath the black into this bottom right was he trying to do too much but he's, I think he's tried getting through the gap to play it bottom left yeah. I'm not sure Either way, it's an unexpected chance that, that's that a, he has to take. That really is a big moment. Early doors, that's a big moment. I'm marking that down as own force error. It's a tough shot, but yeah. A tough shot, Shane, but I really fancied him to get yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I fancied him to get it. The red was so close to the pocket, I he think. A, he had a big margin of error yeah, there. I think just the pace that he was playing at, and he wanted to play at, just made it that much more difficult. Yeah. Missed it. Oh, oh wow. Dear goodness me. That was the most difficult shot of the finish. Is it a sign he's just not settled? The saving grace that he has covered that red at the bottom, bottom of the table, but it does go in in the top right as we look. I'm I'm quite shocked. I think Mark's fans will be quite shocked as well. Because that that just is not what we expect from Mark Mark Farnsworth. left a little bit too much angle no, I, I think he, I think he he okay get, yeah he cues the ball well enough to get into this yeah, yeah. I think he's fine he's, he's come too far but for him he's fine I think yeah won't hit this hard no he'll just he'll cue it nice and he'll, he'll get the most reaction you, you, you've ever seen Doesn't like it. No, that's a big angle. I fancy him to get it. You feel he's got to hit very, very low on the cue ball. I think I think he has to play into it. No, I, th I no, think he's, he's going to put a land on it. I don't. The cloth's so reactive, I think he can get enough into it. Yeah, yeah. looking at that angle, I yeah. think he's right. Yeah, he's okay. Stick with me, Nick, you'll be all right. That is some cue action. Though, isn't Unbelievable it? shot. I mean, that really is. That really is. It's all about the timing, Nick. Oh, that's beautiful. Work not completely over here, though. Can't avoid the cannon into the yellow. So position on the eight, chanting down to look. Is he going to risk screwing off the yellow? I think. I think he's got to play with a run inside. I think he'll pop. I think he'll pop the yellow. Yeah, great shot. Beautifully judged. It's a touch of um, it's a touch of magic from Mr. Magic, and uh, it's really one-way traffic at the moment. It's going to be a four-frame lead in favour of the Scotsman. The Scotsman is flying. Very, Very original, stuff. Dave. Very, Very original. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't even going to give that any credit, to be honest. Just Still get better. <laughs> they can't get any worse. <laughs> get your coat. So we, um, we, I met with uh, Alan Yates earlier, who's the. Um, the man behind eight ball direct and also the genius behind the smart rack which is um coming to your screen soon the, the little logo is a is a giveaway um and he showed me their promo video and it really is a super bit of kit um it's it, it's portable transportable uh, it comes with a strap that you can attach it to your to your cue case so every player can have one and take it around with them i mean being portable is is unique no, like nobody ever carries a, a rack around with them and um, and this thing it literally uses pressure from the sides pressure from your fingers on the back of the pack to give you the absolute clean break and, and Alan's working with a couple of different organisations 
to get that thing out, out wide. Um, and it really is a great piece of kit. Um, looking forward to seeing that hit the market. That's going to be hitting the streets very soon. Sounds great. Yeah, if you think about, I mean, the one piece of equipment that nobody has ever really mastered is the rack. The wooden rack, the plastic rack, they've all got their, they've all got their faults. The, the one um, that they're using, I think, And the thing is, if he gets his dander up, if he gets away, it's going to be hard to peg back because he's going to hold serve so many times with this break. Yeah, Mark Boyle will be in a position where he's five in front here. Um, he'll just feel that if his break is working this well and continues to do so, how is Farnsworth going to catch him? Yeah, it's, it, I mean... It, you know, let's not let's not um, make any bones about this. It's still very early doors in a race to 31. There's a lot of momentum shifts and a lot of twists and turns. And Mark Farnsworth will definitely start pegging his scoreline back, but it will start to be a concern to his fans. Mark will definitely have a run of frames, and he won't surprise me if he gets he gets this this uh, deficit back within the next 15, 20 frames. Mark Boyle just doing what he needs to do at the moment. Yeah, he looks good. this shot even now just imparting a little bit of uh, right hand side on the ball there's a there was a, a, a I think a, a book written once by uh, I think it was Efren Reyes and it called it's called a touch of side and he talks about um, how you can help every single shot with just a touch of side and you could even see it there just a, a, a trace of right hand side on that um, on that shot Mark probably just naturally does it and it just um, just help, helps the cue ball to the pocket It's hard to believe so far that despite Mark Boyle making four unforced errors, he's five in front. Yeah. That is a shocking statistic. Yeah. Well, really. that, that miss from Farnsworth, oh, that, that yellow, very uncharacteristic. Biggest break of the match so far, you feel? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, nine frames gone and uh, seven already in the way of Mark Boyle. Big Ray needs to come to the party. Guys, right, Shane, I've That's got a stopped. question for you. Another dry break from our Farnsworth. Yeah. My theory on this break and you're going to tell me if I'm right or not. When he hits the brake, his Q-tip 
goes up into the air. Yeah. Now the biggest breakers in the game drill down into the pack Drive through and the, the, clock, tip yeah. of the tip of the queue should land on the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, yeah? Let, you know, let, let's go back to the, the famous um, Gareth Potts stance where he's driving through the cue ball and you've got the bent cue where it's on the bed of the table. He's driving down into the bed yeah. of the table. Well, some of the players you can see the tip line when yeah, certain yeah. players have been playing yeah, yeah. you can see where they've broken from yeah. oh Jordan Church when he was playing uh, during during lockdown he had these white yeah. white lines down the either side of the table that's because he was cheating <laughs> <laughs> now now But this is the last thing you want to see after a dry break is is an open table like this. Look at these. Oh, he's giving himself a little bit of a problem there. The yellow that he's closest to now really only passes into two pockets. He'll play it in the middle now. You want to try and play it off the red, I think, so that it opens up the pocket for... Yeah, I think he's right here. Yeah, cut this left middle, land on the one bot bottom left, and then he's, he's good. It's the yellow on the blue spot that could be a worry. It, it only passes to the two bottom bottom corner pockets unless it might sneak past the red in the left middle I don't know could play this off the red just to open it up yeah you're right Sean didn't use the red probably intended to but he's on a ball I think he's just having a little bit of difficulty finding the next ball to land on. Yeah, I mean, well, he's, just, can he use the side cushion and just come up towards the centre of the table? I think he has to, yeah. And obviously the the, the yellow is in the amongst the three. The, the one on the far right does pass into the the bottom right. Um, yeah. I mean, if if the if the yellow on the blue spot passes passes the red in the left middle, then. Uh, then I think I'll be trying to get on that now. You've got the choice of two then. Not playing the yellow off the red has caused Mark Boyle a little bit of a problem. Does that yellow in the, in the, on the right go past the red in the, in the right middle? Let's take a look. I think it could go off the jaw, off the red. And we all towards the centre of the table. Yeah, that's a good shot. And that, that yellow does go past uh, past that red, so... Can, can he play the, uh, the yellow that's furthest right on our screens now and come back round? Yeah, it's not a bad And shot. then not having to, you know, you play the jaw shot. I think I might... I might play, yeah, play this one and go into the yellow above the black. That's a great shot. Now that goes. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a good shot. 
I sorted that problem out. Mark Boyle is thinking very clearly. Great finish, it's us. What looked like a difficult table, Mark Boyle has made it look very, very easy. A commanding lead. You can hardly call the performance a clinic, but you'll take the result. You take it, yeah. I was just about to say, can the crowd get Mark Farnsworth going? It's been, they've been subdued early doors in this match, Shane. Yeah, so I was singing along with them just now. Uh, nah, this <laughs> great atmosphere now. I wish I was out in the crowd, to be honest. Yeah, it's buzzing. Look like having a right party out there. Obviously, 90% of them supporting Mr. Farnsworth and. Mark Boyle is keeping them reasonably quiet, at least for now. Yeah. Won't last long, I don't think. I think the, the North East lads will get right up, get them up for Mark again and uh, try and get them going. And if they don't, there's something wrong with them. Well, he's made a ball off the break, but that's where the good news ends. Problems everywhere. Well... The two yellows by the two reds over the left middle. The top yellow will go off the red to open that up. So it's, it's just the one on the right. And there's a couple of balls there that he could use. So he, he might be all right. Might be all right here. You see it so fast, Shane. If he can screw back off this one, he can use the one bottom right to then go up into that red and yellow at the top. Oh, he's missed. Oh, he's missed oh, no. it. That's what he was trying to do, though. I think that's exactly what Mark Farnsworth needed and his fans. That was Just Mark's fifth on force error, and he's 8 2 up. It's crazy. Incredible. Crazy. You really do feel it's critical that Mark Farnsworth takes these out. Yeah, he needs he needs to start he needs to start um, producing something here. Could he have played that harder? I, I think when you're eight two behind, I think you just have to start potting some balls and, and, and getting yourself back into a rhythm because let's say he hit that harder and, and, and missed the pot because of it, he's he's just giving the frame away. Has another opportunity here to play into the problem yellow. And what that will do though, it'll make it a little bit more difficult to play the shot you mentioned a couple of minutes earlier. Yeah, he's missed that, he's missed that cannon there. It's just so unusual. We're not used, you know, used to seeing Mark Farnsworth like this. He's usually, you know, confidence 
personified. Yeah, yeah. All the time. He's usually the one that's intimidating to his opposition. Yeah. But it's just not happening right now. Uh, I, I think once he starts reading a few frames off, that, that'll all start coming back. Um, it, it won't take... It, it just takes something small to inspire him, I think. I like that shot. I do like that. Played it well. Hasn't opened the red up. difficult here for Mark Boyle because obviously he doesn't want to take on these reds but if he doesn't how is he going to cause Mark Boyle's with problems just a really really tough position to be in to so playing this red over to wow yeah he, he was trying to stop the the shot I said about playing the yellow off the red. I originally thought he was trying to cover the bottom left-hand pocket. <laughs> Hasn't managed to stop the finish here for Mark Farnsworth. just not firing at all in preparation for this match uh, one of his friends outside was telling me he's, he's been off the drink we just see him there look well I'll send you everyone he, he, he looks the best I've ever seen him yeah he, like when I come in yesterday I spoke to him and yeah he, he looks really good Looks good. He's prepared well. This morning he was in for practice. He's been away at a sauna. A little rest. Don't know if he slept. Come back in. Had another 20 minutes on the table. Looked absolutely great. Was playing. You were talking about the table sliding. That's all Mark was playing. He was just playing a half ball shot into the corner. Yeah. And just watching the cue ball. How it reacted. How it skidded. Sometimes when that whistle goes, strange things happen. Yeah, they do. They do indeed. So it looks like Mark Boyle's pulling the trigger here, but yeah, obviously the the red bottom of the table is does double. It's a big bag as well. Um, but he just needs to play one good, well, a good plant here really. Um, be tough to land on another ball though. He'll get very close to this. And even if he does miss, it's going to cause a problem because that yellow on the board line, yeah. the fans with, won't have an obvious pocket. But like you said, can he land on another red? And if he feels he's odds against, he'll have to play this with a little bit more pace. Yeah, I think he could play this and, and play like a little, like a soft start and then cut the red back into the into the same pocket. So obviously the first red's going to move out of the way for it, so he, he, could, he could be all right here. Big shot in frame number 11. He's got it. Great shot. Oh, he's gone for a double straight away. 
I think he's has he come far enough I think he might be alright I think he's okay the, it he, will. he has to pump this anyway to for the cushion to react how he wants it to yeah he's going to hit it with some pace on this clock we'll check yeah. it up a little bit Shane this shot is more than on it's a big pocket oh it's a great shot great shot didn't even use the yellow. No, great shot. But he, he was in it. He's practicing them for a good 20 minutes earlier on, just just knocking doubles in, just seeing how the cushions reacted. Beautiful. So the hard work done in this finish. Yeah, he's that good. That was, I'm, I'm running up. I'm he's playing the one on the, on the top rail. I am. I'm not pumping that out. It shows what confidence he's playing with at the moment. And again, soft screw aside. And he is perfect on this red. Yeah. It's 11 frames played. And it's 9-2 to Mark Boyle. What a lead. It's quieter in here than it was at midday. Yeah. Everything going in the favour of the Scotsman. What can Mark Farnsworth do? He's just got to go up again. Yeah. Just watch that Q-tip. It goes again. Another dry break. How yeah. many is that, Shane? Uh, he's had three so far. Yeah. The only saving grace is... I don't think Mark Boyle can pot a yellow. Maybe he can get this one just below the right centre pocket. Yeah, I think and it goes off the red as well. So. These are a lot easier though when you're 9 2 up. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, if you're 9 2 down, you're not really looking at this, are you? You're probably looking at the red down the rail. Yep. saying that are oh, yellow as the balls it's not a lot in this both colour sets have landed reasonably nicely I think with yellows if you get the first ball you're on your next ball with the red down a rail you have to play a shot you know what I mean he could play the one down the rail land on the one to the centre yeah. drop in the centre pocket I think he might be on this yellow into the middle. Might go in the middle. 
That would be a bonus. Oh, he's not. Uh, is he? Oh, no, he goes, goes long. Looking at it long, I think. Oh. On the middle. Oh, wow. Beautiful. What a shot that is. Great vision. What a shot that is. Get this. Great shot. Well, I said a little bit earlier, that has Mark Boyle got the table down to a tee. There's your answer. Yeah. Incredible shot. Because you, you don't play that as an opening part unless nah. you're feeling confident. Yeah, and he's left the cue ball in the middle of everything as well, so if he missed that... This should be frame over. Yeah, the way he's been playing, the way he's queuing the ball, it, it, it should be. Uh... doesn't look like missing a ball at the moment he's controlling the pace of the match he's not been punished for his unforced errors Mark Farnsworth has had three dry breaks and that has resulted in a 9-2 lead which should be 10-2 very shortly I mean, what can you do? I mean, he must feel like his head's in the bin at the moment, Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, yeah he's had some chances, well, hasn't he? I mean, we said, you know, when it's 6-2, it's still early, but 10-2, even in a race to 30, is a massive lead. It is, but like I said, Mark, Mark will get a run of a frame soon. And like you said, all it takes is three, four, five frames in a row, and which, which can happen, you know what I mean? So That's only like two or three dry breaks. looking like it's not quite perfect on this eight ball but there shouldn't be any problems just as he pots this eight we're going to go over to Nick Finn who's got Clint Ianson so I'm joined by joined by Clint Ianson afternoon Clint um, Let's give us your thoughts on the game to start with. After that, I think um, Mark settled down a lot more than Farnsworth. But I think I still think if Farnsworth can get his break working, I still think the game's on. I don't, I don't think I don't think he's out of the game yet. Not by any stretch of imagination. I think if he can get his break working, then he can get back in the game. Yeah, I mean. First 12 frames gone, I mean, 10-2 is a big deficit at the moment. I mean, Clint, you, you're an experienced money match player. What, 
what does Mark Farnsworth have to do in his mind to, to, to get back into this game? I think he just, I don't think he's settled yet. I think he just needs a couple of frames where he breaks box and he's got a nice clearance on and he takes them out. One or two of them and I think he'll be settled and then he'll be ready to go. That's what I think. There were early sites where, um, I mean, we all said that the break's going to determine this game. Yeah. Mark Ball's just got such a monster of a break. There were signs there that Mark Farnsworth's break is clicking, but he's just been a little bit unlucky with it as well, hasn't he? Well, he has, yeah. That's the thing with the break. I mean, it doesn't matter how well you hit the balls. You can go in off, get kicked in off. You can hit them and they go all over the place and not one go in. But like you said, Boyle's break is, is probably, well, it probably is the best in the world. I think, well, it's just had a dry break now I've said that. Um, I think Boyle and Jack Whelan, for me, have got the best breaks in the world. Yeah, yeah so, prediction on the scoreline from here? I'm still going to go Farnsworth. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to go 31-28 Farnsworth. That's a great Because I think, well, I know, as soon as he's, because I know he's not settled yet, as soon as he gets a couple of a nice clearances on the ball, like a couple of easy clearances, just settle his nerves, I think he'll... He'll be roaring to go and he'll... I said early doors that he's got the weight of the, 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 the sky lounge on his shoulders. Like, I mean, everyone's here to support him. Can that have a negative effect sometime or do you think he's just going to... I don't think so. No. I don't think so. I think, I think he's... The more people here, the better it is for him. Yeah. Uh, that's, well, that's what it would be for me anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be the same for him. He, he will be... I, I think if he clears here and maybe break this just, I think... He, he, he'll, he'll get back in the groove and gets back into the game. Yeah, Clint, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. No worries. We'll see you again later today. Thank you. Cheers. The rest. Cheers. Great to hear from Clint Ianson. Get his views on the match. He's gone for the same predicted scoreline as I made, but I did make mine at nil-nil, not at yeah. ten-two. That's, that's a big prediction from from ten-two. Um, but he's right. That's what I said. If Mark can get a couple of frames on the board. Just reel a few off. Like Clint said, he'd be raring to go. I mean, have the water boys behind him. There's, there's a good, what do you reckon? Two, 200? Two, 300? Oh, yeah, 300. Easy. Northeast boys here. There's a good 50 to 100 Scottish lads here. Yeah, they'll, you, get, they'll get behind a man. Do you agree with um, what Clint said about the biggest breakers in the world? Jack Whelan. And Mark Boyle, the, well, best, you, the best break, sorry. You can't said. disagree with it. Um, obviously, there's a few others, but yeah, them, them two yeah. would stand out if, you, if you're having a conversation about it. I think uh, the hardest I've seen the break hit is probably between Jack Whelan, Tom Cousins, and when Chris Mellon lets it go. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, Tom, Tom could easily be in that conversation. Um, when, when he won his world tra his world titles, his break was unbelievable. And it, but it always is. But yet again, he's caused himself problems and he's going to have to play a good shot here. Yeah, this is tough as well because he can't screw it because he's going to hit the red. He's got to play it like a, like a stun. Yeah, just, just below centre ball, just to come off of two rails. It's tough, it's a tough shot. Tough shot. That top right hand pocket will be playing big. I mean, if he was just, I mean, can he play the double? I was thinking if he was just a little bit higher on this, he'd play the double. Can he play the double? I think if he was a bit higher or a bit lower, then um, he, he, oh, he could, he can. That's what he's looking at. He's got it. Great shot. He's got it. That's a great shot. If he's on this one by the red now, that's perfect. I think he's on both balls here, Shane, and this is just what he needed. Yeah. The one next to the red is the shot now. And then, the, yeah. Gets him going. That's it, back up, set yourself. Not nice. Bread and butter. 
but you'll never ever see Mark ever ever give up like he'll be fighting to the death this is off a dry break as well wasn't it the North yeah, yeah. the North East boys have not had a lot to cheer about so far but they're getting right behind their man he's got one back but still trails by seven It goes without saying, we know what Mark Farnsworth is capable of, but he's going to need the chances given to him. And at the moment, he's not getting them a foils break. Well, that's the thing. It, all it takes is is two dry breaks from, from Mark Boyle. And, I mean, he, he's back in the game, but it's, it's whether or not he's going to get them them two before, before it's not too late. This is why pool fascinates me. It's not a game where I always use darts as an example. When you play darts, there's nothing you can do about your opposition when yeah. he's at the board. But pool, there's so many more factors that go into it. You can sort of slow down the game. You can take control. You can dictate the pace. But, well, I think the eight ball was the only ball potted there, yeah, was I it? I think it was, yeah. So he'll take that. Oh no, it, it, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. So at last he has potted one off the break. No, he, he did pot a ball as well. Potted a red. Ah. You almost feel different about it then, yeah. don't you? I mean, to be fair, they, they did come out of a bit scrappy, but you'd just be happy with getting the ball and being at the table. Now, usually what follows after putting the eight ball... Yeah, we're not going to say it, though, Dave. We're not going to say no, it. We're, we're not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till after he's broke before we uh, mention it. <laughs> Any ball will do. He's hit them sweet. That's the best that's the best break he's hit all day so far. Well we saw him pot two. I'm not sure if he's potted any more. Cue ball landed a little bit awkward. Yeah. And I think yellows are the balls here. If he can play this one to the top right as we look now and miss the red, if he can miss the red, then he's good. Yeah. You, do, you don't taking a yellow yeah I'm not yeah. sure he can avoid that red oh he's played that well but he's, he's touched really the cannon well. yeah this is a big frame for him now if he can get this frame he'll be well up for it it might even uh, spur the lads on to start cheering a bit louder as well they've gone a little bit quiet it's not usually the most animated no. on the table Mark but definitely needs something Great shot. I think he's still okay. He's okay. You can get through I, to the one I at think, the bottom right. I think he's still on it. I think he's on it. He doesn't. He doesn't look too. Yeah, he's not too concerned. I think. Yeah, he's on that. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I just had a quick little look over, and he, he looks all right. He looks better than I would if I uh, went on the ball anyway. See that slide a bit? You see that? Yes. Ju it just slid a lot, and he played that with check side yeah. as well, and it still slid. The good thing here, though, is that he can play this and like, like nice. pin pinch, like a little little punch screw, and he can either go into the eight or, or just past it, and he's he's fine. So I think both these yellows pass into the bottom right, so he's got half the table to yeah, land in. Yeah. Ideally, if he could screw into the eight, then 
that's even better but it wouldn't matter if he goes just past it I think he's just missing it well he's missing it yeah. by quite a way yeah he's played that well to be fair he might have to screw into the 80 it looks like he's got a touch bit of angle This Geordie crowd recognised this was a difficult finish. Yeah. And I think we're going to hear quite a loud cheer after these two balls. Yeah, it's been a great finish. This, this are getting fired up now. You, you'll see a little... It wouldn't surprise you if you see a little clenched fist or... You know, we'll give myself a little come on. Is he going to give the crowd anything? I don't think so. It won't stop them having a good time, though. It is brimming in here. You know, Shane, I enjoy all types of pool. I enjoy the short races, I enjoy a match clock, a shot clock, but there's always something just a little bit special about a cash game. Yeah, I think it's just the atmosphere and the buzz. It's better when you're playing, though. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. So, 10-4, Mark Farnsworth has won the last two. Will he get a chance off the boil break? Wow. He will get the chance. That was perfectly hit. But sometimes you rely on a little bit of luck on the break and Mark Boyle just hasn't had it there. Well, I think, I think you're always relying on luck on the break, to be fair. Like, you can hit the break as sweet as you like. If you don't get a ball, you don't get a ball. I, I, you, you see dry breaks hit being hit sweet and then you see absolute shock of a break potting four or five balls. Yeah, you can, Shane, you can just see a difference in his body language. Yeah, no, he, looks, he looks up for it now. Yeah, he looks... He's walking around the table with a bit more of authority. Yeah. You know, this he's like, this is my this is my club, this is my venue, my table. Gone up a gear, the mentality has changed. Yep. Didn't look his, himself in the first sort of like eight, nine frames at all. I think being the home player and I've always made it, it does put a bit of pressure on you. Absolutely. I mean I mean when you go to an away away venue, if you if you if you don't play great, you ain't got. You don't have to worry about going there again. I mean, he's got. He's got to come back in every day to work. <laughs> Do you prefer having the crowd against you or with you? Um, well, some people are different, aren't they? Yeah, I everyone's mean, different. I like it when you've got a, like like here now. You have got a lot of people for you, and you have got a lot of people against you. you. You get you get the buzz from the four, and then you get a little like. I quite like it when I get a bit of stick. You're just like a big audience, you Shane. Wow, well, big stage. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. That's a great shot. He's opened that pocket up now. And he's on the one over the middle bag. Unless he fancies taking the one long. I'm not sure if he will, though. It's hard to get the white back out because the red's in the way. He's got options, though. If he can drop this one in the centre and leave himself with an angle on the one that's closest to the eight to then get on the one in the braking area. I think he might be able to go through the gap Will of the yellow and the eight to get on the one top rail. It looks like he's screwing this. Yeah, he's playing my shot. Unbelievably. I think he's, <laughs> is he, yeah, he's okay there, I think. Well, we've it seen him... Bit, it looks a lot of angle, but... We've seen him play two doubles already. Yeah, And this, this is quite a comfortable double. Yeah. No, not happy. So coming back 
down the table. Yeah, yeah, like it's, a, it's a better route. Yeah, it's a better like route. Don't play a double unless you have to. Yeah. It's not the way he would have wanted to go, but... Because he has to get on his... He has to get a nice angle on this one now to get on the last ball because those reds on that on that side rail, they're, they're, they're going to play big. Doesn't want to be straight. Yeah, I've just seen a bit of a grimace there. I think he's got a bit of angle there, Shane, actually. Yeah, no, I've seen a bit of a grimace on his face. I don't think he likes it, but it's not a lot. He, can, he certainly can't get close to his last yellow. But I think he's able to play it round off two cushions and get it a little bit closer yeah. if he wants. More important just to leave a comfortable angle. There you go. Yeah, One, well. two. Didn't want to risk. But you see what I mean about these two balls on that, on that side rail now, they're going to play big. He might have to screw it above those two and back out. I'm not sure what he can get. Unless he plays it with a lot, like, a lot of side and, and swings it two rails below him. I, I think he'll screw uh, above the two reds yeah, as, we, as we looked. Yeah. So towards the centre pocket. That's just a great like that. shot. That's a great shot. Beautifully judged. He's cued that so well. And he's I've just seen him walk past us and he's gritting his teeth. Yeah. He's up for it. Determined. But this is what he does. There they go. The boys are going. The crowd believe the comeback's on. I mean, at this level, we know that it's all played between the ears. Your mindset is so yeah, important. Course, yeah. Yeah. Both players have just left the arena. So we're just going to take a little two, three minute break.
back underway. Can Mark Farnsworth continue with this comeback? He's going to need a ball off the break to begin. Cue balls close, cue balls in. And look at that table. This is a Christmas present. Hi, the colour set here, Shane. Yeah, I think um, I think reds are the balls here. Just because obviously the, the black's covering that yellow, I think, in the middle. Just have a little stand up, look at the room. England it, flags everywhere. It is buzzing. Is this what you would choose if you had a cash game? Would you have the music this loud? Um, I think I'd have it on, but I think I'd rather hear the crowd than the music, to be honest. Um, but these boys are quite loud, so this volume's all right. Yeah, despite the volume of the music, you can still hear them. Yeah. Well, no, def definitely put the music on. I love it. Yeah. I think most of us, you know, grew up in the pub playing pool. I think it all depends on who's like. playlist is on. Because if I'm, if I'm playing with Nick Finn's playlist, then I'll rather turn it off. I did see a picture of you on the way, oh, on mate, the way up. It um, must have, uh, yeah, sent you to sleep. Or was that just the conversation? Well, it was, it was a bit of both, really. Uh, he, he was talking rubbish and, and listening to rubbish. Well, he's just, um, you know, taking a five-minute break. I suppose uh, the, the fact it's gone up to 35 minutes, probably quite oh, well received for you. Seven hours in the car was enough. Oh, mate. Brutal journey. Brutal. Never again. I'll definitely fly up, I think, next time. 20 minutes in an in a aeroplane. Oh, well, the other half live, eh? <laughs> well, it's not my fault that he's got his own personal plane. <laughs> No problems at all here no. for Mark Boyle. Screw back three or four inches and he's uh, all good. There we go. And it's come off a Mark Farnsworth break. Has to be said though, Mark's break, you know, he has got it going. He was just a bit unlucky, although the cue yeah. ball was tracking towards that top it, left it hand pocket. Tracking. I'm not sure if it was going straight in, but it was tracking. So the mini run by Mark Farnsworth has come to an end. Boyle is back to being six in front. Have you got any lined up, Shane? Give us an exclusive. Um, any games lined up? Well, there's kind of one in the pipeline, but I'm waiting on someone booking a flight. So as soon as that flight's booked, then I'll be able to announce it. But oh, that means it's somebody not English, does it? It's it's me travelling somewhere, yeah. All oh, right, okay. And I'm not going to push far. you anymore. Well, no, yeah, well. It's, it's not a secret. So um, when I was at the World Championships, no, um, South Africa. Oh, right, okay. So there was talks of, between me and a, a South African guy at the Worlds, he asked me if I'd play, um, I don't know if you know him, Aidan Joseph? I've heard the name. Yeah, so I know him. he's asked me if I'd go and play. I, I said, yeah, they'll pay my flights, blah, blah, blah. They will pay for flights? Yeah. Um, right, okay. But obviously at the moment, it's been it's been two or three weeks, and I've had no, no word from the guy, so I'm guessing 
they either don't want it or it was just him talking a bit of rubbish while he was away. So Maybe, possibly, but the only thing that worry, would worry me a little bit is I've seen some footage of um, cash games over in South Africa and, well, the only way to put it is Barakin is taken to another level. Yeah, well, this we, we already spoke about it and um, it's going to be like this, proper arena set up. Um, I mean, no, no stupidness. They, they want it to be like for them, I think it's, it's a lot. It's like half a million rand, which is like thirty thousand English pounds. So, um, yeah, is I, that I per man or total? Per man, yeah. Per man, so yeah. I, I told the guy, I said it has to be done properly because I, I, like, I've seen it before as well. Like you got all these people in in a, in a stand and they're jumping around the jumping table, jumping up and down yeah, in front like, of your shot. I said to him, that's, that's that can't be happening. Like it has to be done properly. Um, and and the guy, the guy said he was fine. Like he, he wants to do it properly. So yeah, we'll see. Like I said, he hasn't he hasn't come to me about flights or anything yet. Um, but ho- hopefully it comes off soon. That seems crazy. Crazy. Well, I'm all in. From their point of view, yeah, I'm sure I'm you are. All in. And we'll welcome back from his five-minute break, Nick <laughs> Finn. <laughs> five minutes. I got talking. He got. You know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> can't probably, shut up. <laughs> probably pouring someone else's sleeve as well. <laughs> it's the only reason I started doing this because I can't watch pool without talking. He said, "Well, you might as well sit here." <laughs> <laughs> uh, out there, boring people to death, I suppose. I had, I had a guy outside telling us um, how much he enjoyed the stream last night and how much he does watching beer production, so that's off the call. So 11-5 eleven 11-5, five, eleven five, yeah. Back to, back to within six. There was an eight-frame deficit, so he's pulled back a couple. So Mark took sort of three in a row I think and then he got kicked in off and he was tracking that way but he, the key thing for Mark Farnsworth is his break started to get going a little bit if yeah. you didn't watch the last few frames but unfortunately that in off on the break in the last frame was punished and it looks like it's going to be punished even further in frame number 17 I've just um, I've just been around the arena. I popped outside and just just standing outside, listening to the crowd get revved up when Mark gets uh, gets in the seat. You could tell he was reading off frames. When you know, if and when Mark gets close, this um, this place is going to take off. Yeah, both players are firing now. The unforced errors have been reduced yeah they've, they've played they played the, any nerves they had they played them out of their shoulder now haven't they and uh, they seem to have both settled and from 9-2 when we said he had a commanding lead things are as you were because we are 12-5 still a 7 frame gap a commanding lead it was eight at one point, wasn't it? It was ten two, I think, uh, yeah. when we were talking to Clint. So, yeah, just just one back, but he's got the break in the nick, so just needs to win this frame, get it back within six. It's all about scoreboard pressure. If Mark Boyle's not feeling the presence of Mark Farnsworth, he needs to he needs to know that he's there on his coattails, and he's going to pounce on any mistake. So he needs a big break here. This again, obviously, another really big and key frame. Interesting to hear Clint earlier saying that uh, he still fancies Mark Farnsworth, and he said 31-28. Yeah. I think me and, Sh- ten two down. me and Shane were a little bit shocked by that. He picked the uh, the same score as I did, but yeah. well, I picked it at zero zero. Yeah. Well, he's picked it at ten two down. Yeah, it's a big shout. But you wouldn't put it past him. 
in his mind he just needs to break this down into into little sessions of three frames doesn't he just just three here three there that's what he needs he needs balls off the break and he's getting yeah, them so that's more like it isn't yeah, it yeah this at is that. a good break look at them yellows that yellow passes the red to the middle so these are these are all but gone Ball at the top of the table for Shane to get that to get that one off the table. I think the one, the think one in both. the middle first, yeah, middle yeah, first, and then yeah. and then up and the then get rid of it, yeah. And then work his way back down the table. Pretty much, um, he's probably going to take them in the order that they are coming down the table, isn't he? From top to bottom, you'd think. He may he may leave <coughs> the one that's closest to the uh, eight ball spot, one nearest to the uh, yeah. the back area, as his last ball if it passes into the right centre. Yeah. Because yeah, that's the only sort of awkward ball ish. Yeah, it depends how, how easy it goes to the middle. Whether he could just, he has to just drop it in or whether he can he can he can screw it in sort of thing. It might just be me, but has the volume gone up in here a tad? Oh for sure. Yeah. It seems to be getting louder and louder. Yeah. I think Mark could come down for this one on the bottom rail now just to get rid of that because it is still a bit of a tricky ball to get on I think I might come down for that now yes and uh, if you, he, he, he can he can pinch this and, and screw it back yeah perfect if it passes he'll be playing on it now yeah Ah, has he come far enough just to top this through and play the yellow into the opposite corner pocket? Yeah, I think he's fine. Just causing him a slight problem. He's not perfect on this. Yeah, he's okay. Just means he's may have to go up and down with the cue ball of his last colour ah uh, he's okay great shot In and out of the breaking area, no problem. Yeah, he's took his out well. Off that solid break. A good solid break, Shane, followed by a good solid finish. a big hold a big hold yeah it's massive now he just needs to extract some mistakes yeah he needs a couple of dry breaks for mark yeah pretty soon yeah and that'll start revving the crowd up as well which is, is going to buoy him there you go gonna 
up the volume slightly. Yeah, these reds are, uh, are quite nice, to be fair. The first shot is to play the one the top left, screw back into the eight ball just to no, get I, get out I, of the I way. No, I play the, black, the eight onto the red. and oh, the eight onto the red, yeah. of course. And then come down for the two at the bottom of the table and, and work your way back up. I, I'm, not thinking, uh, I'm not thinking black ball rules here. I'm thinking different rule sets. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course, um, in other rule sets, you can't necessarily play that shot. So I forget that sometimes. I think he would have wanted yeah. to come down the table a bit more just to get rid of these two. But he's, he's still fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we'll come back down. I think. Is there, is there any value in taking both of these balls now and then coming down and just leaving the one near the... He's, he's got too much angle eight. on this one to, to hold for that, so I think oh, is he? he'll come down and then he'll go back up and, and deal with the two at the top. Yeah. And that is pretty perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Screwed us, in two in, screwed us back two inches and he's absolutely perfect. Now we, we, we're just starting to see the the Mark Boyle, uh, the Mark Farnsworth, who um, we describe as clinical when he works his way around these finishes. He really is just a master at it. needs to make sure he leaves the right angle on the ball to yeah, middle, well, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll play this one now and then it'll be fine. Oh, it passes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, he's fine, yeah. Great finish. volume again just going up a notch <coughs> pulls back within five frames he's going to be breaking in the next so what he give for a, a breaking clearance now to to pull back within four yeah but at least it's game back on yeah game back on oh yeah Yeah, you, 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 it, there's times in a match where you can just feel that uh, that shift in momentum, and it, it, it's definitely happened here. Yeah, there's definitely been a a shift towards Mark Farnsworth. So another big break, an important break. Times another one well, but it's dry. But it is dry. A great, uh, a great split. Balls are spread far and wide. Yeah, these yellows are gone. Yeah, he just any time he, he starts to to close in. And that, that break plays a part. Well, it was similar last night, wasn't it, with Tom and Gav? Yeah. Whenever Ga uh, Tom got just within like six or seven, yeah. 
Gow just ran away with it again in, and then he ended up going back in 8, 9, 10 in front. Yeah. And, and it's the problem because as soon as you start to get some momentum then you know that, that one dry break is often costing you two frames yeah. and, and, and you know you pull it back to four or five and then suddenly you're six or seven behind again and it's, yeah. it, it, it is demoralising. Especially with the way Gav played last night like he was incredible last night. So it's just looking now at um, the yellow on the left-hand side of Bolt, just making sure that uh, I mean it, that the angle to pot it's guided by a, a, a couple of reds. So do you think that's his opener if he, if no, he can hold the cue yeah, ball? Yeah, yeah, we go for it now and yeah. just drift back out into the middle of the table. He's perfectly choice, choice of other balls. Oh, that's nice. Oh, 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 oh. oh, doesn't want that to tie up. It's okay. He's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Just went far enough. He would have uh, had his heart in his mouth just for a few seconds there. But That was a well-worked shot. Played confidently. And uh, he's very much in the driving seat in this frame. Off screw shot to right centre bring the cue ball back over the left hand side of the table to then deal with this one down to the bottom left it's okay Maybe just a, just an inch further than he wanted but it's still fine yeah you just drop this in now and then I'll choose the two yeah ideally you'd like to land on the red and then be on the one in the middle oh screwing out that's a great shot straight back time it I mean key with that shot is just to not decelerate and the five frame lead is going to turn into back into a six frame lead
So don't forget, guys, uh, you, anyone watching this, uh, you clearly bought the stream, and uh, you're going to be put into the draw for um, first prize of a Johnny Carr handmade cue. Johnny Carr will work with you on the design and the wood. You can pretty much uh, have whatever you want, and it'll show you all the way through the process. And also up for grabs a, a Dr. Q Sam Spackman break cue, as well as uh, a set of balls, a uh, Hainsworth match cloth, and some beer production shirts. So some great prizes in the giveaway. And uh, as has happened so often in this frame, in this match so far, it's um, it's just more punishment for the um, the dry break from from Mark Farnsworth because another great break from Mark Boyle. The table now not without its problems. Um, I think he's going to want to go reds here. Just. The, the two yellows tied up below the middle pockets are, are in a horrible position. Um, the reds all have a pocket. I think the red nearest the bulk line, I think you can get to the potting angle of that ball. So they all have a pocket. They're, they're not ideally situated, but it's a decent chance again. I think you're right, Rick, uh, Nick. I think he will go reds. Just went up and watched, you know, the last couple of frames, just stood up. And I was watching Mark Farnsworth. Interestingly, he was a little bit more animated than usual while he was sat in his chair. And one thing I did notice, he had eyes all over Mark Boyle. Now, he was watching his body language and trying to, just trying to get something off him. Uh, I th I'm going to ask Shane in a second, you know, when you're sat in your seat, wh where's your mind going? Are you watching your opponent? Are you watching the table? Um, I'm normally watching the table, to be honest. Um, like when I'm, whenever I'm in the zone, I'm always on the table. So, yeah, I never really, never really look at my opponent. He's just got eyes on him constantly, just watching him, not the table, yeah. just watching him. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to pick up on something. Maybe, maybe. Or he might just fancy him. I don't know. <laughs> but no, he's. I think. Look at now, he's he's at, he's on the table, isn't he? So, I don't know. It's just, obviously, it's the last thing I would do. I mean, some people are different. It, yeah, Mark, I mean, it, it could be like a, you know, you know, like when the rugby teams they do the hucker and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get so yeah, a bit of eye contact and, and try and yeah, yeah. To put a bit of fear into him. He, he does that a lot. He, he does that a lot. I've, no, I've right noticed him when he when he when he's on tour. He does that a lot. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, well, it um, works for him. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't lose on that tour, does he? No. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I mean, I'm. I'm no player, but you know, I, I barely play at all now. But when it, when I used to play, um, you know, Wednesday night club pool, um, when my opponent was at the table, I'd be stood there chalking my cue, looking at him. Would yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I want him to see I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for him to make a mistake. See, I, obviously, Shane's the man to ask. I'm completely the opposite. I don't want to look at them at all. I wouldn't engage <laughs> with them at all. Yeah, no, I don't want to pretend just, they're not even there. I, I, I focus on the table, to my, like myself. But um, yeah. I think if you, my feeling is that if you look at them, you're kind of giving them what you, what they want. They're, you know, you're showing that you're worried in a way if you're looking at them. I don't know. It's how everybody sees the game. I don't think it's, it's so much you're worried. I think it's just that's just how Mark finds it. He, he could just be trying to put a bit of fear into him. Yeah, could be. Maybe um, just trying to let him know that he's zone. there and he's yeah. he's up for the fight. You know what I mean? And we just noticed uh, Mark's manager and backer Santa Stephen Allison in his corner, right behind him, ever present when Mark's playing. Well, whatever Mark's doing, it's having no effect on Mark Boyle. No, there's not much that will phase this guy. Twenty-one frames have been played. Mark Boyle doubles the score of Mark Farnsworth. Fourteen frames to seven. He's seven frames ahead. Just noticed. Did you spot Mark Boyle's socks? 
No. They get a look at them. I caught them out this morning, really? to be fair. Did you? Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I spoke to Santa about it, and they're, um, they're, actually, they're actually Laura Sox. Ah, right. Yeah. Pink and green. Yeah. Colours. There we go. Can't see the other one quite yet. I guarantee I couldn't fit into my wife's socks. There's <laughs> absolutely no chance. Because you've got size 18 feet. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I clocked him this morning. I asked Santa about it. He said uh, they are Laura socks. Nice. Nice touch. What's his, um, you know, looking at Mark there, what's... What's his psychological mood going to be like at the moment, Shane? You've been in these matches where you're, you're six or seven frames behind. I mean, what, you know, what's going through his mind at the moment? I think you've got to focus on yourself. Not worry about what Mark's doing just yet. Yeah. Um, just focus on yourself. Make sure that your mindset is, if I get a chance, I take him. Um, but again, he, yes. it's the thing that he's, he's hitting the brakes. He's actually hitting the brakes good. He's just not getting balls. A pitcher tells a thousand words there. He sh his shoulders dropped. Big puff of the cheeks. The demoralising thing for him is, you know, I mean, if you're going dry and you're leaving some clusters, you're, you're leaving your opponent some work to do. Well, he's not leaving any work. But there's just no work to do here. These reds are just... That's what I mean. He's actually hitting the brakes really well. He's just not getting a ball. And, and you see that a lot as well. Like, most matches I watch nowadays, people are breaking really well, just not getting a ball. But so you would have thought over a race of 31 that this would happen the whole way through. But so far, it just seems to be the the way it is for Mark at the moment. And the other important thing, of course, is it, it, keeping the um, the home fans muted as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's keeping them quiet. Bread and butter, simple stuff. Yeah, I think he's just just gone a, a fraction further than he wanted there I think he was trying to find the bulk line to take the the leftmost of those two yellows that straddle the, the oh, bulk line I, I actually think he was trying to get on this ball do you? yeah yeah do you? I, I only say that because obviously the, the one's covering the angle of the other so it's just about you know you need to take them in the right order well unless the unless the one below the bulk line does pass into that pocket then I'm talking nonsense but that, that wouldn't be unusual Oh, you can see there. Neither are. Uh, I thought they were kind of on top of one another, but no, no, he's, he's got he's got a clear path. There's a lot yeah. of space past the, the first one to get to the other. It's very difficult to see where he's going to go wrong here. Yeah. And 15-7, the 22 played is well a bit more than a significant advantage, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, I said to somebody outside. By the time Mark Boyle gets to 20, Mark Farnsworth needs to be on his coattails at about 16. If it's 2012, then oh, you, you you struggle to see the way back. But if they trade frames from here on, it, it will be around that scoreline. Just looks ultra focused, Mark Boyle. In the zone, you call it. It's going to be very difficult for Mark Farnsworth to get him out. Again, it's as simple as they come, but he's not rushing. Goodness me, everything to cheer for the, uh, the Scots Army. That, that would have been a much bigger crowd, but there's been all kinds of problems. All the trains and buses were cancelled from Scotland. Some of these guys have, uh, have, have got taxis down. 
it's uh, it's incredible. It's um, you know the it, it's hats off for any that they managed to make their way down here at all. But uh, yeah, a lot of the trains cancelled. They were expecting about uh, about eighty. There's probably about half of that in uh, in Mark's corner. But even so, they're they're vocal. You know, they're a passionate crowd, and he's got a great following. We saw just at the front of the table there, Liam Dunster, the current world champion, is uh, is watching over his good friend. So just just um, a slight a, a slight change of subject. Still on the on, on the subject of Q Sports, but there's a, um, a a big event upcoming over in uh, over in Las Vegas for anyone who's the, uh, the nine ball fan. Um, what, what's your thoughts on uh, on Moscone this year? Just to touch on it quickly. I think it's uh, going to be very one sided, Nick. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the, 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 I mean, obviously the the fifth pick uh, for America being Earl Strickland. That's uh, was welcomed by everybody oh, yeah. in Europe. It was a terrible decision, you know, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I think it is. He, he, he's there to, to, to sell tickets. Yeah, that's he? it. Yeah, yeah you, you shouldn't ever be like that. No. You, you feel it's been made from a marketing point of view. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, obviously, obviously starts in a couple of weeks. I mean, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm usually over there actually, but uh, I didn't go this time. Love it. Yeah, they do, of course. Yeah, I've, I've not missed the last um, the last four. Um, obviously, the one that was in lockdown uh, I missed, but uh, the ones that have had crowds. But um, I'm not going this year, which is a which is a shame. But uh, I, I'm I'm hoping for a, you know, I mean. While it's nice to see competitive pool, I, I quite welcome an 11 1 scoreline. <laughs> I, think, I think you have to say that the Europeans, they dominate nine ball pool with the exception of a couple yeah. in America, Shane yeah. being the most obvious one. Yeah. But it's mainly because the Europeans have so. They have much better fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. Approach the game yeah. from a different point of view. Yeah. Anyway, back on the. Uh, back on the table and uh, this time it's the turn of um, Mark Boyle to, to get a dry break and Mark Farnsworth is back at the table pots one of each so still an open table yeah. I think his aim before the break will be to try and get back within five I think you can see that as sort of a mini victory I think I think is he going yellows here? I mean, you could make a case for either, I think, couldn't you? I, I'd be going yellows here, yeah. 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 It's just a transition from the, from the bottom end of the table to the top. Yeah, yeah. That's, he just needs to get that right. That's going to be the key shot. It's just leaving a, an angle here, which he has. It's fine. He's it's got about a quarter of the table to land in. A lot of traffic there, though. A lot yeah. of traffic. It's one of those you still have to, have to be, be careful of. Yeah, you that red's pick, a big ball there. Yeah, you have to pick your line. Any contact on a red here is in trouble, but you expect him to find... Ooh, he's he's close right, to he got, it. That's he a did great get shot. close to it. Great shot. He Perfectly played. Close. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. played that well. Goes very, very close to this red. Yeah. Look at that. He definitely... Oh, was, yeah. Ooh, I think he moved. I think he moved, yeah. Think yeah. yeah. Any, any thicker contact there, he was in a bit of trouble. Yeah. He won't mind one bit. It's not this frame that's key, it's the next one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Three drop-ins to go 15-8 to go behind. I say that, but the, the red, uh, the yellow list furthest down the table is actually quite tough to get on he has to play this off two rails and bet in the middle I think okay, oh, one rail one yeah. rail yeah, yeah just drop it <laughs> yeah. so. I thought he had too much angle than that mm. we've seen how they play off the near jaw Shane yeah, yeah, yeah just cheat the bucket a little bit he has to dig into this a bit yeah it's the shot in a row 
for Mark Farnsworth. Scoreline uh, back within six frames, is it? Seven. Seven frames. Yeah, 15 8. Seven more to play until the interval, which I believe is going to be 20 minutes. What's he, what's he going to be? I mean, ideally he wants to win 7 0, but that's not realistic. So within, within five. five 5-2 if he wins this session 5-2 and he goes in he goes into the break 17-13 I think given yeah. given where he's come from he's got to be comfortable 17-13 18-12 uh, not 18-12 sorry 17-13 or better yeah yeah 17-13 is the, the kind of minimum of where he needs to be I mean there's a big ask to win 5-2 from here but he's got it in him this is uh, this is where it needs to start it needs to start with this frame it needs to start with this break Break has to get going. They're just cheering for Abel, a, Abel. a ball, but the black oh my has been pocketed. Goodness me. Twice we've seen it now. Yeah. Both times by Mark Farnsworth. That's something else, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to say it, but I will say it. I How many say times it. does it happen? Yeah. Uh, Shane stopped me from saying it before. I mean, it's just the old it, wives' it tale. It is such a cliche, but it, it is. But it, but it does seem to happen. But it didn't happen last time. <laughs> if we say it enough, it won't happen now, will it? So it's a, it's a good theory if you're a Mark Farnsworth <laughs> fan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't even say it, but everyone knows what I'm talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. <laughs> I think if you've purchased pool to watch, you know exactly what we're talking about. Cut break. Wow. Why the change? He was practicing it before the match. Will it work? Great camera shot. And a yellow straight away into the top right hand pocket as we look. Oh, oh look at this, though. I mean, every break he's had so far that he's gone dry he's left the table wide open and now suddenly he pots the ball and there's a great cluster in the more, middle more problems than a math book yeah but, <laughs> but it, I mean it happens so often with that cut doesn't it, it, it Mark Boyle seems to, to be able to spread them far and wide because of the power he generates on that cut Mark Farnsworth isn't generating the same power and, and they seem to converge the, the key to Mark Boyle's break is he gets sort of two breaks in one yeah because the power he gets after he's hit the side cushion he goes back Comes into the back pack in and spits him again incredible he's got to cue this well Has zero margin for error beautifully, beautifully cued pumped it yeah. pumped it in yep absolutely fired it the, the two reds that are closest together look at the side he's played it with sorry Shane yeah. loads of right and, and, and all that side just to literally get an inch off the cushion wouldn't it and, and, but that's also helping the ball to the pocket isn't it because that side imparts onto the object ball and helps it into the pocket that's Shane oh, I never played MSI no. <laughs> <laughs> not for me not no for don't me. ask Shane not for me <laughs> not for me you just cue him straight into the middle yeah, of the pocket yeah. straight in the middle yeah they're tough enough shots as it is. We need to play him with side because unlike Shane, we don't cue straight. Yeah, we don't find the middle <laughs> of the pocket very often. <laughs> or the middle of the cue ball. <laughs> so what's the what's the shot to develop? I, I guess this one from now, the middle, yeah. Here we go. Justin down to look a little bit. Yeah. But I thought we might play the red off the red, to be honest, but yeah. I don't think he's even looked at it, you know. He, he Maybe wants, he's looking he wants, at it now. He wants to hit the red and the yellow both at the same time because otherwise he's going to get stuck there yes yeah, great shot oh beautiful oh, that's stunning he will take that that is a stunning shot just picked his line to perfection and he's just got the angle here that he can just pinch the cue ball back 
see him digging down. He just pinched it past the yellow. Uh, he could just knock the yellow out of the way. Is Ooh, he okay here? I think he is, yeah. Yeah, I think he is. I think he can get to the... Oh, I'm not sure. No. Um, he might have a pot here. He might be forced into playing a slight swerve. Yeah, he might have to turn this one over. But, I mean, when I say turn over, that's a, that's a half ball. The thing is, if he's going to play the swerve shot, he'd be playing for the far red one, he's Shane. Yeah, but then he's on nothing after that. Yeah, exactly. And the right-hand side is taking him away from his work. If he can see most of this red, he might be able to play it with a load of side and screw it out. Well, he looks happy. He can see this, you know. He can pinch the pocket. He had to swerve it. Yeah. And he, he's okay, but again, he's landed the wrong side. He wants to be on the top one in the middle if it goes in the middle. I'd say it does. If, if, if that goes in the middle, then he's okay. If it doesn't, he's going to have to take it long. And that's I think it does. If not, he's going to have to punch the other one in. The thing is, he has to leave an angle as well to get back up for the eight. This is still Shane, tricky. Has he got a shot where he can play the one that's nearest the eight ball spot? And can he screw back off the bottom cushion? I think he's going to play it. Right, he's playing for middle. It was yeah, tight, but it's yeah. straight in the half. Oh, I know, but look at the cue ball. He's, he's okay here, yeah, though. Yeah, he, he, can, he can dig down on this. The fact he's just come away from the cushion helps him so much. He's got to avoid that yellow as well, though. I know it's not in the natural path he's going to screw up past it, but no, this, this he just needs grip, to make sure he gets it, into it. If he grips so much, he'd be all right, I think. Yeah, I think, I think Shane's right. The, the, um, the biggest problem with this shot is probably the middle pocket's playing bigger. But he, he, can't leave it, um, he can't leave it short, can he? He needs to get right up to the bulk line. Well, is he looking at just playing into the yellow and leaving a thin cut on the black? I think he's trying to flick off the yellow. And yeah, he's looking for the white to go off the, yellow. Out of the table. That's risky. That is. I think I'd rather dig down. He's definitely. I wonder if he, can go, if he can play this and go twice across. Playing the flick. Oh, he's gone in on. And he can use his free shot here to open up the yellow. just as it looked like things were starting to turn in Mark Farnsworth's favour but he's missed that thin which is why the whites ended up below the yellow rather than above it open this yellow up put a red on the bottom rail and you won't see many of these finish finishes missed by Mark Boyle Perfect. He can probably screw in behind this yellow or bump into it and try and bump it out if he wants. Always going to have a choice of shots afterwards. Yeah. 
Is uh, Peter Snake by Ryan? <laughs> what, the English Scottish bloke? <laughs> the English Scottish bloke. And noticeable that the, the Mark Farnsworth fans are, uh, are muted and um, they, they, want to, they want to go, they want to kick off, they want to buzz, they want to see this as a competition. But it's, uh, it's all Mark Boyle at the moment. This is very soon going to be a eight frame deficit. He's been eight, eight frames behind a couple of times. I think that's as big as the margin's been throughout the game. Yeah, every time Mark Farnsworth gets going, yeah. something just Boyle goes puts wrong. him back down again. He's punished every opportunity. You know, after the first sort of 11 frames, you'd say. Ah, a little bit earlier. You'll, ne you'll not see any... Uh emotion from Mark Boyle you won't see any kind of fist pumps and uh, not until the end of the game there's a lot of respect between these two players and you won't see he won't give anything away until the end of the game but he's got to be feeling good right now 16 frames to 8 let's not just let's not just miss the significant fact that he's just gone over the halfway line he is over halfway to winning this match 16 frames, 15 still required. I always try and put it into the context of, uh, of where we are in the match. So Mark Farnsworth now needs to win 23-15. That's doable. It is doable. When you put it into that it's kind doable. of context. Sorry, 23-14. I made, I made the mistake. 23-14, but yeah. It's a tall that. order, but it, it's not out it of is, the realms of possibility. Is. He's got he's got the equipment to do it. He's got the tools to do it. He's got the skills to do it. Yeah, I think the the break in play are coming at the right time for Farnsworth. I think Especially, he needs to get the next couple of frames. Just not getting the chances. No. The black's just gone a little bit awkward, he's, but he's okay. There's a couple of balls there that you can use yeah. to, to 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 solve that problem. At first glance, I'm pretty sure he's going to take yellows. Yeah. And that yellow that's nearest to the A ball is just perfect for landing on the black. Yep. We're getting quite repetitive, but it seems to me Mark Boyle hasn't got any issues. I know. <laughs> Just I know. watching him clear up. What else can you say? When your brakes working, it just makes the game so much more easier. Case for Reds here, to be fair. Yeah, he could, he could take either. Because he's yeah. got a nice pattern for his last two yeah, Reds yeah. in the eight ball. It was just first glance, the yellow. I think he will go yellows, but I'm just... There, there is a case for Reds. He's opener on Reds. A bit more difficult. He chooses to cut the one to the middle. He's slightly hindered by the yellow. Top right hand pocket. He's got a nice, easy opener on yellows. It's just the shot moving up the table. Yeah, yeah. He's got to land on with a nice angle on his second to last yellow. Yeah. 
really takes his time I think after the, the this break. This is the longest he's took his time. Wants to map out the finish every shot. Yeah, he needs to be absolutely clear about uh, in his mind about what he's going to do to get onto that eight ball. And that's what he's doing here. Everything else is, um, is just white noise because um, he, he, knows, he knows how to get there. It's just about how he gets onto that eight ball. So both these yellows into the same pocket. This a key shot really, he needs to land low on this yellow. And that's and a little bit too low though. Sure. Yeah, he, he tried to make sure low. he was low and he's left it too low. Too much angle here. I'm not sure, can he screw this Shane and land on the right uh, angle? He's going to have to use the cushion for I th I think, into it. Yeah, I think he could. He, he could play on the furthest north of the yellows here. Yeah, but you need that to open up the, the eight ball. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Yeah, you need that as your last ball just to be able to chop I think, through. I think if he screws it, all he can do is maybe screw to like the bolt, the bolt line, and come off two rails and kind of back of the yellow, and you're still on it. But it's such a tough shot. Or even like a soft bump into the red to leave both balls in the same bag. Here we go, key shot, this is close to the corner, well he's going to be forced into taking I think that's, that I think other that's yellow fine. now. I think that's fine. It is, but he's going to be left with a shot to get on the eight. Oh, yeah, but he's got the perfect angle to come down low on the last yellow, just to stun up, yeah, all he needs to do is stun up into the yellow, into the red, and he's going to be on the, he's going to be on the eight. I think he's just got, it's pretty much, it's not quite on the natural, but it can just stun down I mean it, it doesn't even matter if he lands too low because he can still get across so he's got quite a margin of error here it's more of a soft, soft oh well I thought he was going to play a soft screw Shane no, I think he's right. going to play it like use the red as a stopper to come back like, to come down a little bit but I, I'd be screwing this but yeah I don't like that I, I, I prefer just to just to stun down into the yeah. gap using the red yeah, that can go too. wrong if you use the, the red nearest the, the breaking line he could land off angle on the yellow even if you finish below the yellow I mean you've still got you've still got a shot I mean it's not ideal but you've still got a shot you're, 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 bet, actually, you're, you're better being low than you are high I, I think he's going to go long and leave the white other side and then use it to put the red out maybe maybe as I say high is no good it has to be low even the blue spot would be would be fine Missed. Oh, he's missed it. I said the blue spot would be fine. He, he got his cue ball perfect, but... An unforced error. Indeed. And that's a big one. Yeah. yeah he never really just, never just seemed to settle through that finish, did he? Never really looked comfortable. No. Absolutely. manager Stephen Allenson just you can see him just a few words a few words of reassurance sat there in his corner great support he is they're great friends and uh, and Stephen really looks after him he's just uh, just be a couple of words of encouragement don't worry about it put it behind you no need to worry up yeah, it. you've still got the lead just it's just one little mistake put it behind you move on that's the kind of thing you need sometimes. Like you say, they're very close and it's obviously a relationship that works because Mark Boyle's been very successful. Yeah. Pop 
possible momentum shift. Yeah, it's just what Mark needed, really. Especially with the break coming. coming. Yeah. We could look back later and see that as a key frame, a key miss. Maybe. At the moment, it just seems so far behind, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have to work the cue ball here. Just a, a tiny bit of angle. He's going to be going away from his work. Unless he can screw the cue ball. Now he's going to play down and back up again. That's fine. He, he couldn't fail to, to be okay on it. Yeah. Just drop this in, run it, run the cue ball through. Probably just run it off the side cushion and back over. Just like so. Touch a run inside for the eight. Uh, you just don't use side yeah, at all, Shane. There's no need to, is there? <laughs> he did. He definitely did. He did. You can see the way the cue ball. He's got a 7.2 mil tip. <laughs> isn't yeah. I wanted that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always playing. But, but in, all, in, all, in all honesty, I think that really is a good tip for the club players that are watching at home that, that don't understand. You know, we, we mentioned it earlier, but just to touch on it again, when you play those shots on the rail, if you use running side, the running side imparts the opposite side onto the cue ball. So the cue ball, sorry, the, the object ball. So then the object ball is in spinning towards the pocket. It's sticking to the house, yeah. stick to the cushion. Of yeah, so and then when so it hits the far jaw, yeah, it's the far jaw, it pulls it in, yeah, rather than pulls it out. So that's the reason that, that, uh, that players use that. And you'll, you'll often see the top players just using that touch of side, that trace of, uh, trace of running side. Some of us just need all the help we can get. Oh, absolutely. But it, it, it definitely is a thing. Like I say, it, it, it just depends on style. Cut break again for Mark Farnsworth. The last one he found the ball, but it was a bit of a bit of a pickle, bit of a cluster. Good break. Is he going to get yes, one? Yes, he is. Yeah, that red's going to go. That eight ball went precariously close to the top right again, didn't it? The difference between the two breaks, though. Mark just relying on last ball moving here. But look at the leaves again. It's just a pickle, isn't it? Look at it. It's um, it's, it's awkward. Yeah, it, it, it's the opener. Well, I don't think he's got an opener on reds. And options are quite limited on yellows. Yeah. In fact, has he got any pot whatsoever? I think he's got he's got the one long, hasn't he, to, to top right pocket. I don't know if he can get past his yellow to, it, to I get think it's, there. I think the red's the one that's in the way, I think. Is it in the way? I think so, maybe slightly. Difficult to tell. If not, then that's the shot to play. Can he cut back? into middle or is that too no, acute too thin. yeah too thin there's not even any safety he could play either if well, he's touching if ball, he's touching he could yeah, yeah. yeah he could well, I don't think it is touching that. I haven't no. seen the referee call it and now uh, you can see a, a bit of light between the two balls there I don't think that is touching what has he got for us well, so he could get through to that ball, but in doing so, he was always going to just nudge the other one across the face of the red. So that he couldn't avoid that. I don't think he could avoid that uh, that little flick. So he's caused himself another problem there, which he's going to have to address. Yeah, and he's not got a ball around it, so he's going to have to play a shot. Has no, he got? I think if he can play the if he'll stun the one in the middle, then he'll play the outside of the two on the left hand side and nudge into the red to leave an angle. Well, you get rid of them two first then. They leave an angle to play the one in the bottom right and then straight up into it. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, yet another really huge frame. As we... Oh, he's on it now. As we pull closer to that, um, to that break at 30 frames, it's... Uh,
or too much. Oh, he really, he really has struggled with his developing shots. I was just about today. to say, was he on the gap to play that shot? It's amazing. It's his home table, but Mark Boyle seems to have settled better in that. You know, he seems to be playing those um, those developing shots. You see the delayed reaction. On yeah, the, yeah, I was just about to say. You see it arc. Yeah, that's the cue ball. Cue ball spinning backwards so fastly, and then it grips. So you yeah. end up with an arc. You can play that shot on purpose, can't you, yeah, Shane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By queuing down. Yeah, and with so a bit you, of side, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hard to see, uh, hard to see where that, where he attacks from. I mean, he, he has to attack from here, but. Well, he'll, he'll, play, he'll play the one long bottom left get rid of the other one to the left of it and then he'll play the same shot yeah but all the eggs are in one basket now uh, he has to go that's a, that, that's three or four developing shots that just haven't come out for him I mean not just hasn't come out for him he, he, he's missed the, the the target he's gonna like Shane said he's gonna have to pop one of the two yellows at the bottom of the table as we're looking and then play the same shot again. Yeah. Looks like the one nearest the cushion. Now he's gone too far and he's missed the pot. Yeah. So Mark Ball's got the same issue with the, the two balls tied up, but the red develops easier than the yellow because it only needs a, a nudge on the yellow and it pushes the red up towards the pocket. So that is not a difficult ball to develop. He's obviously got the, the red on the side cushion as well, which is in a bit of an awkward spot. It's um, it's not in the in the best spot to to double. I mean, it's okay, but it's one of those you need to play it as a reverse double. Um, I mean, the, the balls that are just a few inches below the below the middle pocket, they're probably the the hardest because you don't want to take it on as a pot and. Um, they're easy enough to develop from below because you just need a nudge to push it over the pocket, but he hasn't really got anything, any balls down there that he can use. So this is certainly not straightforward. Yeah, difficult. How are you attacking it, Shane? Uh, I don't think he needs to attack. I think he might he might be able to just maybe come cushion first and nestle on the one. See the red and yellow together and just nestle in in on the red. If the red's off the cushion, yeah, you yeah, can play that shot because, because the like there's a red by the middle knuckle. It doubles unless he plays a plant up the rail with a yeah. lower side to. Go up behind that red. Yeah. I like I like nestling up to it. If that red's not touching the side cushion so it's not frozen. I know he doesn't need to push the boat shot. out, but it's 169, I just think he I think he goes. I think he's gonna um he's gonna play the, the second shot Shane mentioned, the plant. Lots and lots of right hand side, send the cue ball across. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hard enough plant anyway, but it's it, the, the level of difficulty is increased because that red is just off of the cushion. He's going to play it as a cannon. Just trying to make oh, things yeah. a little bit easier for himself. Yeah. And you feel Mark's going to be forced into going for these. Has he left a double for his problem yellow? It's odds against. I think the white's close to enough if he, if he plays the double. Might even be able to play a treble. I mean, the red might be in the way. His options are so limited here. 
he, don't, I'm not sure he can get through to the one nearest the bottom right hand pocket the potting angle can he looks it's tight, it's tight yeah. so that means he's forced into going cushion first which means he can't do too much with the cue ball well he can't see it oh there you go yeah I think I'll be dropping that in and then playing the yellow up above the back and cover the back he's eyeing this double or treble I think the treble yeah big shot Good news, bad news, I guess that, that red is, is still the one below the middle pocket. I mean, it will go into middle, but you've got to be perfect on it to uh, It goes in the middle, it. and it's an easy double. Yeah. I think he goes game here, Nick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But it, it's not... It's not a gimme finish. It's not a three-foot putt, let's put it like that. <laughs> I don't know anything about golf. It's not a six-inch putt then, I don't know. I'd miss a three-foot putt, so I don't know. <laughs> wow, that has gone completely wrong. However, he may be able to just nestle him up behind this red. You have to be careful you don't leave the plant. Is he touching the red is the first question. I don't think so. Well, is he touching the red? Oh. Is he touching? Oh, just off angle. Nah, the referee would have called it a voice. Yeah, that's why they got a ref, Dave. I don't know if you... Is, it, is there one out there? I've not noticed them. <laughs> that's how good he He's is. He's done such a good job. <laughs> he, yeah, has the, been, he has been quality to be Yeah, he is quality. To, Brian to be Moss. honest, we haven't, uh, we haven't mentioned him yet, but yeah, Brian Moss, uh, Brian Pod, is, um, is, he is one of the, the most experienced refs. Very, Super. very good. If he's not touching Shane, will he be tempted into going for the pot? Well, he, he can put his shot rail. to nothing, really. If he can leave the white bottom rail, then he'll leave it as a shot to nothing. I think he might just be bouncing off. Yeah, he'd come round just to see what he was going to leave Mark Farns with. And the answer is not a lot. Ooh. Does this red, it's yellow, close. sorry, sneak into the centre pocket? I think it's tight. I think if it did, you Mark, wouldn't have played that. Mark wouldn't have played that no. shot. I think he's already looked at that. So difficult to tell, even at that angle. Yeah. yeah but like you said, we can only assume it doesn't. Surely Mark Boyle wouldn't have left it if it did. I think it, I think it could go. Let's change his mind. I think it does go. Make your, well, mind, up. Make your mind up, Shane. I would be very shocked if it so did. So, look, looking for me, I think he's got half a bag. <laughs> I mean, he's got he's, he's got the easy three-ball plant. I don't know what he's... <laughs> it, it doesn't go, it does go, and now we've got <laughs> half a pocket. Yeah. Right. He's definitely one of them three options. Yeah, he's sitting on the fence, is Shane, today. Doesn't, well, it doesn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to nestle him back up behind this red. I like that shot. Yeah, that's nice. But he's going to be in trouble now. The reds. And he's tied another one up. Yeah. He's, he's going to be in trouble now, though. Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, whoever play, whoever's playlist this is, I want it. I've already asked. I've already asked. I'll send it here in a minute, yeah. I haven't searched it yet, though. Yeah, he's, he's tapping the table. That's a good shot. And when you say he's in trouble, I'm not even sure it's that easy to get him in trouble. Because if you flick on it and it goes to the cushion, you're likely just... That's a, that is a delicate, tricky little shot. I'm not even sure it's on. The boys are sharing playlists now. It's, what, it's like watching a couple of kids trading Pokemon cards. Yeah, that's, that's been downloaded. <laughs> Kept, kept the atmosphere going though I'm a big fan of it yeah definitely yeah the only problem is it makes it more and more tempting to go to the bar and not order soft drinks <laughs> large Jack and Coke please yeah <laughs> have to have a word with the boss at half time get his views on the subject <laughs> he might say it's okay after nine o'clock yeah, let's get past the threshold. See, I'm already getting text messages. You could send me that playlist also. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> all the boys at home on it. It's been a, it's been decent, to be fair. It's class earlier with the strobe lights and all the lasers and stuff. I mean, if you're a, if you're a '90s child, I'm sure it's. Uh, I mean, a young man like me doesn't really remember this music. Well, I'm definitely. Well, I am a '90s child, so <laughs> I wasn't born in the '90s. You remember? You, you just remember? I actually see your playlist on a daily, and it is awful. <laughs> we saw that. We saw the effects of it on the journey up. <laughs> Shane was asleep. It was awful. Uh, that was be the, fair, um, the playlist this morning was pretty good. That was a dynamic conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Bored to death. Scintillating. Ah, the playlist this morning was good, though. Yeah. We got in the car and the, this morning it was, it was Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. And I'm like, hang on, where's all this coming from? <laughs> and I look, and it, it was all the swearing songs as well. And I looked down and it's my son's playlist. He's, te <laughs> he's, te he's 10 oh, years old. Ten. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been there. Uh, so yeah, Max, if you're watching, <laughs> nice one. We're listening out on the way home. I rang, I rang him. Hours on Sunday. I rang him, you little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there's some banging tunes on yeah, there. It was decent, yeah, it was decent. <laughs> That's a playlist for Sunday on a track home. Yeah. It's terrible when you tune in into your 10-year-old's playlist. <laughs> Because yours is so sad. <laughs> well, I don't mind a bit of Dolly Parton every now and again. <laughs> Just six hours. But not yeah, not for six and a half hours. Well, it was about eight hours on the way up. Shane kept requesting the Witch Doctor by the cartoons. <laughs> but I wasn't going to play it for him. Wow. And he wanted Barbie Girl. <laughs> I told the witch doctor I was in love with you. At least you know the truth. <laughs> Thing is, um, most of Shane's music comes from um, comes from his youth. We've got to go back to the 1960s we, for that. Go, how how old go. are you? Hey? How old is he? 63. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 63. Looks good on it. Yeah, he does, actually. I'm yeah. Only, yeah, I'm only Still at the top of the game as well. Yeah, I I'm mean, I'm, I'm, I'm only 30 I'm years behind Nick. He's, he's going <laughs> to be playing in the seniors soon, but... I can't wait. He does all right for 63. I can't wait. <laughs> he doesn't look a day over 62, to be honest. <laughs> Seniors Paul Strive at the moment, I can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, Boyle's just put himself big favourite in this frame now.
Trying to play this into the right centre. No. Wasn't much advantage in potting balls. George is over there offering me, uh, he tried me on cakes first and then, now he's offering me grapes. And all I'm doing is looking in the gap between two ladies that are just in front of me and all I can see is a cold bottle of Corona uh, and that's the only thing that's drawing my attention <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Supposed to be a professional, Nick Finn. I am. That's not being <laughs> alcoholic as well, is it? He's just not giving him anything here. No. No. I think he's just going to see him roll this yellow down towards the pocket. The crowd would be absolutely bouncing at the moment. If, it's uh, about to go off. If, if Mark Farnsworth's um, scoreline was a bit closer. Oh, I thought you meant because of the song that's just come on. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah, I meant. Right They'd be bouncing to this song. Yeah, but they were, Oh, they still are. Fair play to them. Fair play. It's too early for them to stop. Yeah. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Are we getting three lions next? Well, they haven't had much to shout about so far. Letting him go an inch. No, more covering although, although he's left Mark a treble, which gets his bad boy out as well. You wouldn't, you wouldn't um, think about cutting that yellow down over the pocket just to try and get some covering, or is just there no well, value? Uh, I don't know. At Black Ball Walls, you can just sort of turn the screw. Yeah just keep causing pain to your opponent he's so far in front I agree with Shane I think the attacking option's the right one here if the treble's on play it give yourself at least a shot of getting out yeah I know but he's still got the the ball at the bottom of the table which Yeah, it's a horrible situation. He's having to give this one some thought. Yeah, because the thing is, if he, if he plays a boy over the bag and it gets too close, he's going to leave the skill shot. I think he's just thinking now, Farnsworth, like, I've got to take something on because Boyle's out. I think, visit, I think that, that red close to the middle bag is going to be in the way for the treble, so this is probably... That's unlucky. 
Is it though? It's hard to see how it could have come out quite well. Yeah. His options were just so limited. I'm not sure I want the playlist yeah, anymore. I, yeah, I was about to say the same. I'm not sure I want this playlist now. The Scots like it. Has he got a double here? I mean, there's no reward, but where, where, where do you go? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, he's had no reward off that shot. Well, that was a fantastic bit of vision. Just take a look at this, Shane. Beautiful. That's incredible. Shot of the match so far. Yeah, we can see what he's looking at next. He's going to play this yellow at the bottom of the table to try and get it off the red into the centre pocket. And hopefully leave himself a thin cut on his last yellow. Yeah. It's gone up a notch. You know we're only halfway through. Oh no, yeah. He's looking at cushion first on over the red, but I don't think there's not enough gap there, I don't think. I think he's just gonna play this shot, he's gotta play it quite hard. I think it's on. I just knew we were getting Neil Diamond next, Shane. Didn't you? It's Ooh. there. No, it's not. And the chance will fall to Mark Boyle to further his lead. He was always odds against Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, he had a good go though. That was that was some effort to be fair. Just looking at you, Shane, and I know you're uh, resisting every urge in your body. Just not sing the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might as well be the national anthem this song. <laughs> Fantastic. Not in perfect position, but shouldn't be a problem.
nothing is taking that man's focus off the table. A well executed tactical frame by Mark Boyle. He leads 17 frames to nine, just four more to play before the break. Sponsored in part by Vindaloo and Neil Diamond. Welcome back. Four more frames to go before the break. You're watching Beer Productions. Once again, the break, reaping rewards for Mark Boyle. Great separation on the pullers and a very decent opportunity to go 18-9 in front. Yeah, I think these reds are gone though. just getting so repetitive but his yeah. break's working it's just not a lot of work to do is it mm. 
Just got to judge the cannon here. Can't avoid it. And Whoa. hasn't judged it well. And he's left himself very awkward here. Well, if he can just get, you know, cue to the side of the yellow, it makes this red a lot easier. Yeah, no, you can definitely cue it, yeah. He doesn't like it, Shane. Looking at this angle here, well, that angle, he may have played a double. Well, he's, he, can, he can definitely cue it. And he could probably screw the white. Oh, what's he doing here? Looks like he's playing the double to the corner. Well, just looking to yeah, tie the good. black up, maybe. And leave Mark Farns with no shot. Yeah. It's clever. got nothing great shot Just going to try and play thin off one of these yellows and leave him on the top cushion. I think I think that's all he can do to be on honest. The bottom cushion. Yeah, that's all he can just do. Just looking there. I think either way you're leaving him a, a, a long tough one. As tight as possible against the cushion will be the aim. He's been so solid, Mark Boyle. Yeah, he has, yeah. You know, I, them unforced errors, yeah, we said at the start, he'd made, what was it, four or five? Uh, and I think he's only on six now. Yeah. So, I think he's only made one error in probably the last 10, 11 frames. Yeah. That's a good shot. That's very good. All he's left is the one on the row. And as this frame looks like it's got a little bit of mileage in it, I think we're going to hear shortly from Liam Dunster. He's just fixing his hair. Not that me and Shane can talk about that. Not comfortable at all with the long pot he's been left. Well, I can't even see the full point. Now he's looking at playing it off the side cushion. What's bothering him, you feel, is that he's almost certainly going to leave Mark Farns with a pot. And I think we are ready. 
I'm just going to pass you over to Nick, who's got Liam. World champion, Liam Dunster. Liam, you've been watching the game uh, right next to the table. You've got a bird's eye view of it. What's your thoughts on it so far? Um, to be honest, I think the score's about right. Um, Boyle's had most of the chances from the break. Um, I reckon if you, if you can read back the frames, it probably is about 79, as in he's had about 17 chances like from the break. Nick Marks on the hard nine. So the break's kind of determined the, the match so far. Um, so obviously if it continues like this, it's just going to... Uh, it's going to... Fuzzle's only going to get to maybe not even 20, but I mean, the chances are the, the luck of the break will leaving itself out, so there's definitely going to be a patch where all the breaks are going for us for me instead, so uh, it's, a, it's a good chance of a comeback, I'm getting, getting close here. Yeah. Did you expect this kind of scoreline? Did you expect this kind of scoreline? I mean, you, you really don't know what to expect, I mean, you could come back tomorrow and it'll be the, the scoreline's the other way. Uh, like I say, it, the, the break determines it. I mean, you, you never plan on not getting a ball off the break, but it always happens, but it's happened a lot more for Mark than it has, well, for Farnsworth than it has for Boyle. You, you played against both of the players, sparred with them loads and loads of times. What does Mark Farnsworth need to change? What, what needs to happen for him to get he, back he into just, this? He just needs to break better. Yeah. Uh, simple as that, yeah. He, he's not doing... He's not making too much mistake. He's still making odd mistake here and there. Um, but it's just all about his break, really. If he can get his break going, and he'll, he'll, he'll start the rhythm again. The crowd will, will liven up a bit more, and then he can start the comeback. But yeah. until his break starts working... It's not really all, in it. All on the break. I guess the key question is, can he come back? Oh, it's a long way down. Yeah. It's a long way down. Yeah. I mean, uh, it is a long way down, but there's also still a long way to go. So, yeah, yeah you can definitely still come back. Yeah. Big scoreline. You enjoying the game so far, though? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah great atmosphere as well. Great yeah, crowd yeah. in Yeah, I mean, coming here, I thought, oh, I, I don't know how it's going to be with the atmosphere. I, I thought I might get nasty at one point, but it's been absolutely brilliant so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think... The players respect each other yeah. so much, and I think the crowd respects both the players so much. I, I just don't see that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad they've got um, Brian as a referee as well because I know he's quite a strong referee, so he won't take any hell or should I say? Um, yeah, yeah. So he'll be quite strict. So if there's any shouting on the shots, he'll remove the person immediately. So there's not going to be anything like that. So I, I was quite glad when I seen Brian uh, referee. It. I guess. It, I can't let you go without just asking you. I mean, you had an amazing, amazing year last year. You know, kind of the epitome of your career, getting that world championship. Are you looking forward to defending it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, so the, the club settling down a bit, so I'm, I'm spending less time focusing on that. So hopefully, more focus on the pool. Yeah. Um, within the last six months I've, I've not really been putting too much time in so I, I think that's kind of showed in my results See, even though I'm still getting like quarters, finals, semi-finals all that but it's not my usual like wins so if I put the time back in again hopefully the another title's around the corner yeah. yeah, the club going well or has it yeah, been a bit not, of a distraction? No, it's, it's going really well, I just needed a, a lot of work done at the start uh, but now I've put in all the work, it's kind of beginning to run itself I'm getting used to it in a routine and stuff so, so yeah, it's going well though Brilliant. Liam, absolute pleasure to talk to you. you. Enjoy the rest of the night. Best of luck for next season as well. Thank you. Cheers. See you soon, mate. All the best. Cheers. Thank you very much, Nick and Liam. Great to get his thoughts and feelings on the match so far. Definitely still feels this chance for a comeback. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It is, it's, not, it's not over to this over, as they say. Well, he's looking down the hole of a, a nine-frame deficit very shortly. The best he can hope for at the break would be He plays that shot so well. Yeah, I think you'd see a lot of players risk a cannon into the eight there, wouldn't you? I don't but think it's necessarily the shot. eight. I think they just normally just top it through and, nope, and and leave a bit of angle, but he plays that shot really well. So comfortable, we're using quite a lot of side.
Well, if there's any way back here, Shane, you feel he has to take the last three. Yeah, I agree. Um, you don't want to be going in more than 10 behind, that's for sure. And for the third time in this match, he has pocketed the eight ball. have a little run through your stats there Shane yeah so great dishes 5-2 in favour of Mark Boyle reverse dishes in favour of Mark Farnsworth 4 frames to 3 dry break amazingly Mark's only had 4 yeah I know yeah and we've been talking about his break quite a lot Mark Boyle's only had 2 half of that Unforced step is quite similar as well. Amazingly, Mark Boyle has made more. He's made six. Mark Farns with, with just the four. Yeah, I think some some of the errors that Mark has made has been more like he's had to he's had to pull out a shot rather than missing an easy ball. Like, and you can't really class that as an unforced error, in my opinion. Yeah, just while Nick was interviewing Liam, I'm sure the viewers were watching. He had a long yellow up into the top yeah. right pocket and missed it by quite a way there was quite a lot of pressure on it and he's been in that spot a couple of times yeah, yeah his, his cue ball's not been as, as good as it normally is um, he's had to pull out finishes that he wouldn't normally have to have to take out and obviously when you're not used to having to pull off a shot it's just kind of catching him out it's a tester I think he gets this one Unlucky that. He's had a bit of a touch though. Yeah, is he okay? He's, he's on that. He's on that ball. He cut this one back. Just trying to get his problem ball out. Just going to see these two reds towards the centre pocket. I think if he does. I think he passes the yellow, the one towards the centre of the yeah. table, and then he can play on the double. Wants to avoid the eight, and has done. But he's left himself very, very awkward. Yeah, this is what I was saying, he's just leaving himself tough finishes. You know, having to pull out a big finish. I think he was a little bit worried about the centre pocket there and playing yeah. it harder. So yeah. once again, Mark Farnsworth faces a big shot. Looks good. Played that really well. He's okay here. I think this does go. But the problem he's got, he needs to play with a little bit of pace because he's, he's got to screw back the cue ball. Unless he's got the angle, he can maybe run through and play the gap, and then and then play the red into the middle or in the corner. Oh, he's screwing back. He is screwing. Wow. Doesn't want it on the cushion. This double's still on. It is, but it's, this ain't what you normally see from Mark. His cue ball's normally spot on. That's and a great it's shot. There. Great shot. A big eight ball in a must win frame. Would you believe it? When did you ever see Mark miss balls like that? Never.
scoreboard pressure. Yeah, that's that's all it can be. That's all it can be. That said, he's left it over the pocket, and these aren't simple. There's a little bit of work to be done, a couple of little tricky pots. Oh. I can see your face thinking these are gone. Yeah, I mean, the way the table plays, I think the balls on the rail are, are okay. Um, the ball over the left middle can be used to get rid of them, the, the two balls on the left-hand side, and I, I can't see any problems here, to be fair. You're just dropping this in the centre, yeah, then using the opposite centre yeah, pocket? Yeah, just run it through and then... Yeah. This has landed not I, as planned. I don't think he's going for anything here. He's going to touch him up? Yeah. He's going to leave him a three cushion escape. Sorry, a two cushion escape. I think he goes for it. I think he takes the one up into the top right. Oh, no, it's one of them situations, isn't it? Where you, 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 you want to take it, but you think if I miss it, I'm giving a frame away. You know what I mean? Well, then you put him in the snooker and he gets out and pots the eight, and you yeah. wish he'd gone for it. Well, yeah, I suppose. Can't yeah. Win. It's all odds against. This is when, in the rare occasion, you do play the player, saying, What are the odds of my opponent getting this yeah. eight ball? I think the other thing as well, sometimes you've got to play the scoreline. I mean, oh, you're back. Hello. Well, you've run off again. <laughs> Mate, wasn't it good to hear from Liam? <laughs> Great to get Liam in the interview box there and interesting to hear his thoughts. Yeah, it's brilliant. You'd uh, be a brave man to bet against him defending his world title yeah. early on next year. Yeah. He is good. Well, he decided to take it on. Just shows how good he's feeling. In the heart. The thing is, I think if he gets this one it's a, it's a proper dagger yeah it's a with the break coming it's a dagger look at Mark's body language behind arms folded beautifully struck again He's just making everything look very easy at the moment. Yeah, that was, that was a tough little out. A huge lead, 10 in front. Guarantees himself an eight frame advantage at the halfway point.
so it doesn't take a mathematician to work out that uh, the best that Mark can go into the break is 1911. If you were in Mark Boyle's position now, Shane, would you feel like the job's virtually done? No, nah, it's never done. No. Not yet. No, nah, not when you're playing someone as good as Farnsworth. No way. Yeah, he still needs 12. A lot of the hard work's done, but it's still. You have to. You have to put your foot on. You have to put your foot on the gas. Still, it's really only half a job, isn't it? The thing is, when you're playing games like this, you don't want to just win. You want to absolutely murder them. That just yeah. hurts as well, doesn't it? The last ball moving just plops into the pocket. And it's not a bad leave. No. Reds look okay. Red to right centre, drift over to that, that side cushion to take the one nearest the right side cushion next. And then work your way through these balls at the bottom of the table. Well, yeah, we said it a few times, see it, it just breaks off, opens them up so nicely all the time. Yeah. Slightly off angle here. I think I would have liked to have, uh, have taken the one down the rail next and then just stun into the into the little gap of the triangle to take the one in the middle of the three next, but he's seen it differently. Okay, just forced forced into playing a little kiss on the red. Yeah. The only reason I say it is because he has to then uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem. He, he has to take the one on the far right as his last in this trio, but he's got the one to left centre so he doesn't have to do anything with a cue ball I was only going to say that it's a little bit difficult to get the cue ball out because the yellow is just above obviously so the uh, player and referee just having a little dance there <laughs> what do they call that in the old uh, line dancing David you must know you no idea you know, I was old as you Nick you're a line dancer aren't you surely no, absolutely yeah no I'm, I'm they, don't they call that a do -si do Oh, oh, well, up. Dave's a pole dancer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I was going to be a stripper, not a commentator, but then I realised I was fat and I couldn't dance. I've got, I've got an image in my head now that I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you said on your pancake expert comment the other day, is it? I'm a bit worried how closely I'm to you at the minute. <laughs> I don't think many people would have predicted this scoreline at the break. I mean, it's incredible. Including Mark Boyle himself, I should yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's some performance from him though, isn't it? Well, he's been, he's been class. He has. Yeah, like we said before, if you take the unforced errors of Mark Boyle at six, I think five of them were in the first probably six or seven yeah. games. And he got away with that bad start. Yeah. 
He upped his level and Mark Farnsworth hasn't been able to catch him. He's made his own, he's missed pressure pots and not had the opportunities to get close to Mark Boyle. Got to, you've got to really feel for Mark Farnsworth. That was a dry break, yeah? Yeah. You have to feel for him. I mean, even the most staunch Mark Paul fans, I mean, they'll be most happy with the scoreline, but you just got to feel for the guy. And he's, I don't think anyone, you know, as much as the Mark Paul fans will want to see him win, I think everyone wants to see a competitive game. And yeah. It's, it's just not there at the moment not to say that it still can't be but this is some scoreline and the break just not coming off it has to I mean Liam, Liam Dunster touched on it the break has to start firing yeah. it's as simple as that you simply cannot compete at this level unless the break's firing especially when your opponent is firing A lovely touch, lovely control. Just looking now at the red at the top of the table. Yeah, I think Maybe. he's got to play this a bit of pace though. So he's going to go into it off two rails, but he has to play this a bit of pace, I think. As always, he gets stuck behind it. Yeah. Yeah, if he plays it at pace and gets the cue ball out, he'll be unlucky not to be on it on yeah. something because there's three balls there in the middle of the table. So. shot that is not what he hoped for that's not the result he wanted he's only got that one red in the middle of the table one to the right of the eight ball I think that's the only ball he can see isn't it yeah but I think he can see yeah he can see enough of a plant uh, I don't know
not sure what he could play here. Maybe the yellow off the yellow. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. So every time he comes to the table, he's just in in a world of hurt. It's horrible, isn't it? It really is horrible. I mean, you, just picking up the scraps really and having to play a worldie just to just to get yourself in the frame. And even if you can get yourself in the frame, you know, it's to pull back within ten. I mean, it's it must be demoralising. But he just has to keep himself buoyed. Just keep himself focused and in the knowledge that you know it can swing. We, we've seen bigger swings than this in money matches. It's hard to see how when Mark Ball's playing the way he is, but that's all Mark Farnsworth can do at the moment. game sometimes huh? yeah it is it really is I think you'll take the long, long now. Maybe not. I thought you might take the one long and then just screw back a bit to leave a decent angle. Yeah. I think I think he still may, you know. I think he, he was just looking at his next shot to, to pop the red in the middle and just push the, the yellow away what kind of angle he can leave on that last red. I think he's just planning the, the sort of three shots ahead. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Just looks so good at the moment. We keep saying we need Mark to make a few errors for Farnsworth to get back into it, but you just can't see it happening. And every time he does make an error, Farnsworth clears up. And then he'll either go dry or, or mark a break dish. So we're going to a, uh, a break after this frame. It's going to be a 30 minute break, so that gives you a really good chance to uh, go make yourself a brew, maybe um, get some food, perhaps order a takeaway, ready for the rest of the evening because uh, there's only 30 frames played to this point. A potential 31. It's hard to see how there's going to be another 31, but who knows what the second half is going to be like. It's, uh, it's Mark Boyle. It's been all Mark Boyle in this first half. Mark Farnsworth needs a paradigm change 
to be able to get himself back into this match. He needs things to start going very wrong for Mark Ball, and he needs to play the kind of best ball that he's ever played in his life. And uh, who knows? It can still happen. We're going to find out after this 30-minute break. Do join us. Go away and uh, have yourself a nice break. Have a relax. We're going to be back in 30 minutes with the action and the second half of this match. Mark Boyle goes into the break 21, 9 frames to 9 frames ahead, leading by 12. See you in half an hour.
Welcome back. This is Beard Productions with you to the conclusion of this match. Mark Boyle only needing nine, uh, ten more, sorry, to get the victory. First chance though, will land to the man that needs plenty if a comeback is of any hope in this match. Very, very difficult to see any way back for Mark Farnsworth, but one thing's for sure, he will not give up.
you often see sometimes with players when they're so far behind that their arm will loosen, they'll take on a few balls that usually they wouldn't and get them because they just feel like there's no hope left in the match. He's certainly going to have to take every half chance he gets, Mark Farnsworth. Not sure we can see enough of the red of the, the right hand side one the two reds together I don't think you can see enough of it to make it so this up into the top right and disturb the two reds well he's had a little bit of luck there Or has he? Because I'm not sure he's on another ball. Let's take another look at this. Yeah, I think he's okay here. I think he can clip the one up into the top corner. I have eventually been joined by my co-commentator Shane Thompson. Where have you been? Well, we thought it was half an hour. And um, I'm guessing he started a bit earlier. Yeah, me and Nick was outside trying to get a bit of fresh air. He's just gone to the toilet, so he'll be back in a minute. I think you can understand that, though, Shane. Both players just wanting to get on with it, with it being such a gap in the scoreline. Yeah, I think... Um, I, mean, could, I think Mark... I think Farnsworth needed the break. But I think he might just be thinking, I need to get out there and, and just try and string a few together and see what happens. Well, I was just saying before you arrive, sometimes when somebody's so far behind, it does loosen the arm a little bit. Yeah, it bit. does, yeah. The loser stroke, they call it, don't they? Loser stroke, yeah. that was it. That, they were the two words I was looking for. So I spoke to a couple of guys on the uh, on the break, and um, there are a couple of interesting things that are quite pertinent to this. The first one is that um, Mark Farnsworth is likely to come back raging over the fact that he's, he's losing by so much at the moment and he plays his best ball when he's raging. And there's something else which is, which is quite topical. So when Mark Farnsworth played Phil Harrison, at the same point at the halfway point, Mark Farnsworth trailed by 19 frames to 11 and he won the match 30-20. 30-20. 30-20. Wow. Phil Harrison won one more frame. That is incredible against somebody like Phil. So he will most definitely have that in his head. He will be thinking, I need to replicate that. Now that's, it's a big ask. Of course it's a massive ask, but he has to hold on to that hope. Yeah, you've got to hang on to something, I suppose, when you're in Farnsworth's position, but Boyle's just so solid. He's not giving the chances. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. That is unbelievable. Yes, it's only his sixth unforced error, but that is outrageous. Brian Moss said to me at the break that he has seen Mark Farnsworth miss more balls today than he thinks he's ever seen and he's refereed him for a lot of frames. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, he's he's missed key balls. That's been the difference. Uh, the ball that he's missed has cost him a frame, and then usually the one after as well. He's been doubly punished each time. But that that was that that one's unforgivable, wasn't it? 
Holy moly. He just, he just looks just completely out of sorts in a way I've never seen before. I mean, yes, okay, that's gone wrong for, for Mark Boyle, but he's still got two pockets for that, for that yellow. And I thought that was a bit of a strange shot choice. Yeah, I think he didn't, have to, he didn't have to kiss the eight there. Yeah, and the way the table plays, playing down a rail was the easier option, yeah. I think. Yeah. He's giving himself a problem he didn't need to. Yeah. I mean, the way he's feeling... You can't see him missing them, but... I... He could have done with another couple of inches there. Couldn't we all? <laughs> Speak to yourself. What do you mean? You're six foot four, you? Is it after 9pm? Eh? I was talking about my height. <laughs> So what were you talking about? Oh. Yeah. Forced into using side, but perfectly executed. The cheeky two in one in? <laughs> Why not? No, I think he's a little bit... Well, he, he's, he could play nah. that, I think. He looks a bit straight. Nah, we just stun this in. I don't think we'll get exhibition pool. <laughs> no. Not for 45 grand, even if you are no, 12 sir. in front. No, sir. Looks like he's screwing. Ah. That's <laughs> great. Beautiful. As they say, use that every inch of the pocket there. Use. He wiped his feet. But played it at the right pace, didn't he? Gave it every chance. Played it at a great pace. This could be done in an hour and a half. I gotta say it, I mean it. I'm a big fan of both of these players. I really am. I've got so much respect for both of them. But your heart goes out a little bit to Mark Farnsworth at the moment. He's just, um, he, I, I've never really seen him struggle like this before. No. There's not one person in the country that would have predicted this small line after 31 frames. No. You look infused, Shane. I just don't understand. Uh, I've, like, I've never seen Mark play play so poorly like this. I think he I think he'll admit himself like he's just not been he's not been there tonight it's quite sad to see actually because I was telling my friends at home like this is the game of the year like this it is. is this was the big one Even this is, is, has gone wrong and he's having a reroute. He's got the wrong angle on the red that he's closest to. It wasn't his original plan. And now it's slightly hampered Kieran. And after missing that shot on the last, none of these are going to look easy. Yeah, he doesn't look settled on this. Expect him to get it. What will be interesting, if things continue in this match in the manner that they have done, Obviously, it'll be a very comfortable victory for Mark Boyle. 
which will give him 2-0 in the cast games. Will Mark be tempted by a third? Maybe. Would you? If you were in his position, Shane? Um, I, think, I think he would, only because he knows it. this isn't him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he'll want to prove himself, maybe. Mark's a winner, and anything, anything apart from winning, he's not happy, is he? And it's worth mentioning, he's an old school cash player. He will have had a chunk. Oh, he would, yeah. He will have had a chunk on himself. Yeah. I mean, let's finish here. Yeah? Let's, let's, you know, make no mistake here. Mark Farns was of the quality whereby if they played again tomorrow, you know, he could, I'm not saying he could reverse the scoreline, but, but he's certainly good enough to, uh, you know, to put this behind him. And I mean, it's going to be a body blow. It's going to hurt for a while. I mean, we, we are writing them off, aren't we? I mean, that's the trouble in our conversation, it, it sounds like it, we are. It's just very difficult to see anything other than a comfortable Mark Boyle victory. I know. You just can't see Mark Boyle giving Mark Barnes enough chances to win this. And, 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 and trust me, guys, I really want to see a competitive game here. Um, I, I'd I, love I, this I, to go 30 all. Yeah, I would. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be down on, on Farnsworth here. It's just the way the game's gone so far, it's just hard to see where it comes from. You know, at a lesser level, at a club level, people people jam up a bit. You know, they, they, the back arm goes, they start getting nervous as they get towards the finishing line. Mark Boyle is one of the most experienced money match players. You don't see how that can possibly happen. You'd have been hard pressed to find anybody that wouldn't have guaranteed 55 frames in this match. Definitely 50. And the truth is, yeah. you know, we, yeah, might, you, we you, might not see 45. You, you would have set the line at about 54.5 and probably like taken that. a lot of bets over. Over and under, yeah. yeah. The main reason being is this man's break has given him opportunity after opportunity. The difference between the cut breaks is when Mark Boyle breaks, he almost feels guaranteed and he makes one pretty quickly. Power with, in it, with Mark Farnsworth's break, you're always waiting that extra couple of seconds and watching. Do you, Do you know, know what I, I mean? I've got I've got a bit a bit of a theory on that, and that's that Mark Boyle is one of the only players on the circuit who's committed to the cut break. You won't see him do Gee. anything else. No. Yeah? So other players go to the cut break as a B plan when the front ball break's not working. Mark Boyle is absolutely committed to it, and that, is, that is his thing. So I think, and, and, and I think because of that, he's the best at it, because that's all he practices. Yeah, he just doesn't do it any other way. You, and you find, though, and Shane will surely emphasise a little bit on this, that most players are front ball breakers. But even the front ball breakers, if it's going really, really badly, they will change to the cut break. There's very few. Yeah. Sarah Potts springs to mind. Mikhail, they they won't change to the cut break. But even people like Chris Nallin, who have uh, publicly announced their hatred for the cut yeah. break, do change over yeah. if it suits them. But 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 the point is, I mean, Shane, for example, I mean, you're a, you're naturally a front ball breaker. How often would you would you practice a cut break? I mean, you never. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah, that's your point. He, they don't practice it. They don't practice it. And, and, and he that's all he practices so he, ha he knows exactly where to contact that pack at what pace what ball he's going to make do you know what I mean he just he just knows because he commits to it and he does that all day every day and that's why he's the best at it and what an advantage to have all the pool players know that yep. the break is the most important shot yep. and he's got one of the best breaks in the world yep. so. and, and the strange thing uh, no disrespect to Shane you've got the number one ultimate pool player sat next to you and he never practices a cut break but surely any player has to have that in their arsenal well especially playing it on the tour that Shane plays on because we do know that making the eight ball can win you a frame yeah. and the chances yeah. 
of making the eight ball increase dramatically with the cut rate. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picking on Shane there. I'm not singing Matt, but but it's the same across the board. It, Mark Farnsworth won't ever practice the the, the cut rate, and that's why it's not been as successful as. as I saw, we saw him for about ten minutes before doing it, just for the match. Yeah, he was warming up to it, but I, I, I fully understand what you're saying. What are your thoughts on the gut break? I'm not a fan of it, but um, if I need to do it, I will do it. But, you know, obviously people want it banned and all, all this sort of thing, but it's, it's, a, it's a break, isn't it? It's, you're not guaranteed a ball just because you cut break. Do you feel your chances of making a ball are less with it, and that's why you don't use it, or you just feel that your break is so strong? Than the yeah, cut I, ball? I, I just, I just find I control the weight a lot better with my normal break. So I'll only have a cut break if, um, if my normal break's not, not really firing. I'd say technically it's a lot more difficult the cut break. Yeah, yeah, it is to, to do it well. How many times has Mark Paul gone in off the break today or off the table? Not once off the not table. I don't, I don't think he's uh, scratched either. I can't. We haven't kept a record on fouls oh. off the break, but I can't I think of a time he's done it. Fouls have done it a couple of times. Maybe one early doors, but I don't think so. Resisting the urge to sing on this playlist to the end of the show. <laughs> Yeah, if, you, if you don't mind keeping on resisting singing, I don't know. Oh, yeah. any, anyone, nobody at home, not a single person at home, enough has of paid nine pounds no, ninety nine to listen to your dulcet tones. <laughs> There's enough of that on social media, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He just looks like a man that's going through the motions. Yeah, definitely 23, 10, 13 frames. And he's, uh, he's just eight away from the line now. I will take this opportunity actually just to, just to say uh, uh, thank you to everybody at home. I recognise that, that everyone's parted with their hard-earned money to watch this, this stream today. And I know there's uh, mixed opinions on pay-per-view. Um, uh, I mean, we are here, the guys have been here since Wednesday, working so hard to bring this to you. And uh, th th there's a lot of expense involved. Um, the the, the, the pay-per-view, the, the players, um, take a cut of it as well so they benefit from it so Mark Boyle was giving all of his to charity to the uh, the council charity that um, helped Lola um, so you know that's fantastic so you've generated money for charity you've also got yourself into the draw for a, a Johnny Carr queue a Sam Spackman break queue Sam sent me a picture of that uh, that break queue and it looks fantastic he's going to put the finishing touches to it and it'll be ready to send that in the post next week Johnny Carr is going to work with you from scratch to make a queue but your commitment to, to, to watching Paul, you know, there's people that are short-sighted and think that uh, pay-per-view shouldn't be a thing, but, you know, we're paying for some great entertainment here, and this really is some great stuff, and the beer production team bringing this to your front room, so you're coming out in the rain and coming to the club and watching it. The club was sold out anyway, so I, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to everybody to support this, because it, it makes it possible for beer productions to, to go on and do bigger and better things and, and, and do this all over again and bring you bigger and better games and that's exactly what we want to do. So did a, did a commentary team get a place in this draw? Well, I could do a set of pro cups, to be honest. <laughs> You'll have to speak to the boss man about that. 
So we, we will announce the winners on on the elite elite uh, eight ball page, and that's is that later today or is that tomorrow? Probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. That little nudge was okay. Although them three balls at the bottom left-hand side of the table do look comfortable, they're actually all blocking each other at the minute. He certainly won't want to play a plant. open it up well, it hasn't oh it just rocked back not touching but no shot for Mark Boyle Yeah, the, um, I mean, even when it breaks down for Mark Boyle, I mean, look at this table for Reds. They're just a, they're just a mess. So even when Mark, Mark Farnsworth does get a chance, it's just a, it's just an ugly table. Yeah, you could put the cue ball anywhere on the table here, and the Reds would still be difficult yeah. to finish. Yeah. And he comes to the table again, and he's. He, he, he has to pull out a great shot, has to pull out a plant to the middle or... I think we may see him play the one on the left hand side near the centre pocket. Just send it towards the bottom left pocket, Just possibly. Just get some cover there. It's thin, Just get but, some yeah. cover, yeah. Just try and take control of the frame. I can only imagine what's going through uh, Mark Fines with head, head at the moment. I mean, he'll just be try still trying to play the table and just trying to play every shot on its own merit. But, you know, what, what goes through your head when you're staring down the barrel? He's looking at the plant to the centre pocket. Oh, I think the top red goes. Ah, OK. He just wants to take on anything right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just feels like he... He just wants to get out of it. <laughs> See, I don't know. Honestly, I can't imagine what's going through his mind, but it's, it's just real painful. You've got, you've got the Scottish having a party over here, he's got to try and block him out. I was about to say, if you weren't sure which team they were on. <laughs> wow, well, he's, he's tempted here. I don't think we would have seen him take on these chances earlier on in the match. No, you wouldn't. No, I think he's stuck to the red now. He's not on anything. Yeah, he's not on anything here. And touching ball. Yeah, he's snooker here. Mark Boyle, you're a cheeky man. 
lining up the off the cushion double. Yeah, you can see some <laughs> shots too, <laughs> come. I think the most he can hope for is to play one cushion and try and tie one of Mark's red, uh, one of Mark's colour set up. Yeah, one of Mark's red, sorry. One cushion and play thin off the yellow. That's furthest down the table. Well, he is looking at the... He's looking I at the double mental. The thing is, he's got... If he's going to go for some get out the snooker and try and top a ball he might as well just play this because he's got just as much chance as, as getting this as he has tying up a ball highlight real oh shot my oh my god oh my god oh my god get that other highlight reel <laughs> oh my word and the most amazing thing about this is Nick Finn called it <laughs> that's unbelievable <laughs> that is that unbelievable take a bow Mark Boyle fantastic I can't believe what I just saw there that is absolutely sublime <laughs> Jesus Christ if it was ever in doubt whose night it is Stick that on the highlight reel and uh, and replay that all over social media because, my goodness me. We will definitely take another look at that shot at the end of the frame. I think that's probably one of the best shots I've seen. Oh, oh that is something the, else, folks. The confidence to play that. <laughs> That's going to hurt Mark Farnsworth as well because oh, I want to see his face. Oh, yeah. wow. Head headed hands, I think. I mean, I mean, sometimes you've just got to be stoic and go, whatever. Fair play. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I've watched him commentate on a lot of shots, but that is just amazing. It's right up there, that. Yeah. Just twisting the knife in now. Yeah. Just twisting the knife. Well, he's took just his take, time all the way his through time. the match. Yeah, I know he is. Let yeah. him sit there and think that, about it a bit yeah. longer. <laughs> well, I'm presuming this cuts into the centre, but it looks very thin. Yeah, I, I think his body language suggested that that's gone too far now. I, that's not going past the red. Well, he, he's, he's forced into playing a, a sort of deep screw shot here. Yeah, screwing on sure. and off the top cushion, no, Shane? I don't know, I don't know what, I think he's playing in the middle. Do you? This is, looks very tight. Hey, he's cutting in the middle, I think. You're right. It certainly is. Beautiful. That is an astonishing the finish. The man only needs a quarter of a pocket. Well, you will be seeing that shot around on social media for a very long time to come. That is something a little bit special. We're witnessing some performance here. A man at the very top of his game. Just take a look at this, Nick. <laughs> Don't get bored of seeing that.
more success. I mean, look at the Reds. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying that. Does the, does the red pass to the bottom right? He's having uh, a close look at it now. A uh, little bit of work to do then. Go on this now. Come behind it for the middle. Yeah, if you'll come behind it and play it in the middle of the corner. Yeah. I'll tell you something else though. As much as uh, as much as I feel for. For Mark Barnsworth, I couldn't really be happier for, for Mark Boyle. He's had a very, very tough year, and uh, and what, what, I mean, the measure of the man, all the money that he gets from the uh, from the stream is going to charity. That is an absolute measure of the man, and, and tells you a lot about him. Let's go to Strathcarron Hospice, which. Uh, was uh, the hospice that helped his wife as she went through a battle and uh, he was almost we did a, a little stint on commentary yesterday of about 15 minutes and uh, you could just tell a little bit emotional he's, he's out there doing this for her he said I know she's there she's in my corner She's behind me all the way. And uh, she's been driving him forward, driving him to get back to the game, and driving him to this performance. Absolutely incredible. An unwanted nudge on the eight there. He wasn't trying to, to bring it out. What just come across yeah. on the cushion and, and back I over. I was surprised he went that way. I thought he would have played the one closer yeah. to the pocket first. I was thinking the same. Yeah. It just shows how good he's feeling though to, to yeah. be playing those sort of shots. So he knows now that he, he can't get below the eight. So I think he's just looking at, at running into it. No, I, think, I think he can play this with a load of side and come back out. Do you think he can yeah, come yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if he catches the eight, he's still going to have a shot. Yeah. And he's working out the line. Miss. A rare miss. It was a tough little shot though. Still a, a bit of a smelly table for, for Mark Farnsworth to come at yet again. Those two yellows on the left aren't particularly nice. But I think he'll just be happy to be at the table at the moment. Just... It feels a case of uh, of making the scoreline respectable, but who knows? One thing you can be sure of: Mark Farnsworth will continue to give it 100%.
taken the double. It's quite high. I judged that really well. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. The Mark Farnsworth fans haven't had much to cheer about during this match, but there'll be a big cheer when this uh, when this black goes in. A lot of respect for this man here. A lot of respect. Again, a tip our hats to the referee, Brian Moss. He's done a, a great job out there. Spot on, Brian is. Lovely guy off the table as well. Back to the front ball break, but the misery continues. I think Mark Farns has got to the point where he's just going to shrug his shoulders and go, meh. One of those days. Yeah, it's not a nice place to be. Like I say, he, he will fight for every frame. There's no question about it, but yeah, you can see his, his body language kind of arms over the side. It's not often you see him looking like that. No. It's really not. He's normally got that eagle-eyed stare. Still looking at his opponent as he goes around the table watching the body language, but he's normally just dialed right in to what's going on, and uh, and you can tell there's definitely a bit of body language there. That's uh, it's not what uh, he was looking for. So just that well, yellow going across the red. Would you know it? I think it still passes. Do you I think? think that, I think that red still passes. Yeah. It's got the perfect angle to give it a nudge now. If it doesn't, I think it goes. And it also goes to um, it goes to right middle. Well, maybe not. He doesn't think it does because he played into it. No. Again, that's, that's no good. That's no good. He's got a shot towards the the top of the table. He's got one to top left. Uh, top right. Sorry. We just hope that, you know, when you're in Mark Farnsworth's sort of position, things away from the table that are happening in the club start to annoy you. You can start to get distracted by other things, and we don't want to see that, obviously. The little niggles can become bigger. Yeah. You know, he's, he's got the line through to that one to top right, but that red on the side cushion now really is a problem because it doesn't double, it doesn't go down to uh, bottom right. I think what does he use to develop it with? I think he's gonna have to leave it for a double into the corner, the top right hand corner as we look at it. He used the uh, he used the yellow there. He was trying to just get that cue ball a little bit higher just so he could um, he could get the angle on that red to come down onto it but he didn't, didn't just didn't quite get the right contact I feel he's gonna 
drop this one into the centre pocket and then play for the double in the corner, Nick. If he plays for the gap in the yellows, he could leave an angle to screw down into it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but you're not pushing it into a yeah. positive you're position. pushing it towards two yellows. Yeah. I think he may be right. He might be, he might be forced into the, into the cross corner double. I mean, after that snooker escape double, I'm not going to write off anything at the moment. Well, the double into the corner is far easier than the last <laughs> double we played. I think he may be looking for that angle, you know? Yeah, I think you're right, Nick. Maybe, is that just a touch too much angle? Or can he, can he grip the cue ball and get it down there? I think what he can play is he can play a, uh, I think Shane was about to say, he can play a cannon into the yellow nearest to the red. Yeah. And hopefully leave himself a double. Play is that double. what you're going to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, our producer's just said that's exactly what he was thinking as well, but I got there first. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Shane's mind was probably ahead. I was thinking. <laughs> Shane's nodded off over there. What are you talking about? He's, he's nodded off. I'm as bored of hearing your voice, mate. <laughs> Yeah, okay. afternoon he, nap at 63, though, isn't he needs, it? He needs an afternoon <laughs> nap. You wait till 9 o'clock when the water chef. <laughs> well, he's plumb on the double, anyway. Are oh, we going to get to 9 o'clock? Well, well, we should do. Yeah. You just feel like he's getting this, don't you? Oh, it's wicked. Just it like really it is. Always in. It really is wicked. Just wow. Holy moly. It's relentless. You just That's feel the only like thing. somebody close to Mark might be shining down on him tonight. Yeah, I mentioned Everything that. Everything is going. I mentioned that when you stepped away that uh, he, he said yesterday when I... I did a, a little 15 minute spell of comms with him yesterday and he said she's going to be sat by me all night in my corner and he said do you know what he said I can hear her I can hear her yelling out because she she was always vocal at his matches always vocal she was very vocal you'd hear her above everybody it was fabulous I mean Mark's absolute biggest fan and uh, he said she'll be, on, be, be behind me and he said I can hear her voice fantastic well something has definitely elevated his level not that it wasn't high already but my days after the first sort of three or four unforced errors I haven't seen Shane mark one off for the last two three hours I don't yeah. think I, um, I mean I, I said it a second ago I'll, I'll, I'll say it again the same word it, it, it's relentless it just it is. is very inspired performance yeah yeah that's a that's a great description I'll give him a bit of kudos, Shane, though. Before he did pick Farns up at the beginning, he said to me, I think Lowe will be shining down on him and inspire him tonight. And yeah. that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, yeah. Eight ball. Fourth time in the match, but first time for Mark Boyle. So I just mark that down as an unforced error just for the giggles. <laughs> In the same pocket every time as well, isn't it? Top left corner. Yeah. Set the last uh, the last three have. There we go again. Your short term memory is better than mine. <laughs> Another look at that that cross corner double. Brilliant. So, six more frames between Mark Boyle and Victory. Mark Farnsworth with a mountain to climb. Just the 20 frames to five he needs to win. I mean, I uh, I don't want to be a party pooper, folks. I never do. I want to try and keep the excitement going to the end. But 
it's um, it's impossible to. Yeah, becoming increasingly difficult. That break really is phenomenal. Do you know what? I think there'll be a number of professional players out there today watching this game thinking, do you know what? I'm going to get on the table and start having a... If only we could ask one. Yeah. <laughs> I won't be. No. But stubborn. the thing is, uh, no, I, I think I think Shane's got a really solid front yeah, door break yeah. and, and, and he rarely needs to go to that uh, to, to, to try something different. But players who do struggle, there's a few players out there who do really struggle with their with, with time in their break. I mean, the man, the other side of the chair, we said right at the start of the day that one of the weak, one of his weakest... And it's it's been his said only the, weakness. Yeah, it, it's been it said for the last weakness. 10 years. It is like, The problem is, it's such a significant shot at this level of pool yeah. that it's it's almost a handicap in, in I mean you can get away with it in a race to 8 you can't get away with it in a race to 31 first of all it's worth noting that that's not been the main difference tonight no. it has played a part obviously uh, I think it's 8 to 2 the in favour of Farnsworth for dry breaks the thing is you say that Dave but I mean it, it's I mean it's not the only difference. Mark made some mistakes as well, but is that pressure born through frustration that his brakes not come out quite as well as pressure should? as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's get he's missing the ball, but it's all layers of frustration that build up. You know, he's frustrated because his brakes not working, and then you know that that means that he just takes his focus away because he's maybe just fuming a bit and he misses a shot. I mean, it, 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 it's all it, it's part of the package. Just going back to what you were saying, though, when you were considering the cut break, the reason Shane is so, I'm, I'm guessing, so adamant he's not going to is because he's so confident he hits the centre of the cue ball yeah. and contacts yeah. the pack exactly where he wants to. Yeah. So he controls the cue ball, I'm guessing, 90% of the time and above. Oh, I don't know well, if you I ever so, look yeah. into it. Yeah. And the, the reason you consider the cut break mainly, the main argument for it is, you're less likely to go in off. Yeah. So if you've got a great fumble, mate, stick with it. It's only if it doesn't work. Play that well. Three balls and the eight for I can't believe I'm saying this, Shane. A 15 frame advantage. Crazy, huh? Well, I presume he's played for the gap between the Reds. Yeah. Surprising, though. I didn't think he was going to go that way. Did you? I thought he was going to take the one over the right, land yeah. on the yellow. Well, and I think as long as he. Yeah, as long as he can stun this in, and uh, yeah, it's fine. There we are. Play just a bit of run inside now, and then black left. The shot that he loves and plays so well. It's the one. Not missing at all. Nope. I'm a professional pool player, get me out of here. It's probably what he's thinking right now, Farnsworth. Yeah. Very topical. Well, it was the nine o'clock mention, wasn't it? Hey. I've been forced to watch it this last week. <laughs> forced to watch yeah, it. Yeah, female company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, David's forced to watch that. He's forced to watch Celebrity Come Dancing. What's that? I don't know. He's forced to watch <laughs> Dancing on Ice. He's forced what? to watch Love Island. What's all, all this dancing? Unbelievable. Hey? 
Force to watch Love Island, aren't you, mate? We've been through this. Forces you. I can only dance. <laughs> the truffle shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> You're old enough to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Shane's not. He ain't got a clue. No, nah, he's too old. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's just incredible. It, like, how many tries is that, Shane? I think he's dry, but last three. This is nine. Ninth dry break. It probably feels like taking an automatic shot run to the pack. And what's the score? 25... 26. 26. 11. 11. 11. No, it's... Yeah, 26, yes. 11, yeah. How many breaks has Mark had? He's had around what? 17? No, 18? Yeah, 18. And, he, and half of them have been dry. And, and God knows how many he's had in off. He's had a few in off. Yeah, two, two or three, definitely. Crazy. I mean, I don't know Mark Farnsworth personally, but do you think he will go back and watch this? however painful it might be. I, I don't think so. I, I wouldn't want to. If he's if he's aware, and we know he is, because I've heard him being interviewed, that his break is his weak point. Why why not work on it to improve it? He, he probably has. It's just... I don't know. I understand not everybody can break like yourself or Tom Cousins or Jack Whelan. I think I, don't know, I think sometimes you can you can practice and break well and then it comes to the matches and it's just it's just not there. I mean it happens sometimes. I've had it before where I'm I'm leading up to a game and I'm breaking terribly and then I go to the match and I break like God. It's just the way it goes sometimes. It is worth mentioning though, them nine dry breaks, if he'd a potted off, say, six or seven of them, and we reverse the scoreline, it's still a very close match. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just not been the full story, the break. Yeah, if he, if he pots off seven, I mean, if you think back to the amount of those breaks that, that, um, that were dry, and they were just left wide open. So if, if he pots off, six of those he's on 17 it's 2017 isn't it I mean it's it, it's a whole different complexion he's not played that great uh, is he on anything here no. I, don't, I don't think so no I don't think he can get to the middle of the three to pot it in the middle. I'll tell you what he has got. Yellow off the yellow in the Yellow middle. off the yellow in the yeah. middle. You're getting quite good at calling shots. You should, <laughs> you should consider a career in commentary. <laughs> You and I should have a game, Nick, and we'll let Shane commentate on us. We'll have a field day. <laughs> I'd rather stick pins in my eyes, lads. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he would ruin us. You don't take the opportunity just to rip us to pieces? No, I'll get bored. Oh. If, if, if we can get Paul to do a highlight reel, I'll just watch the highlights. Or the low lights. There won't be many highlights, that's for sure. 
It'd be a very short reel. Well, look, Nick's missed another pot. <laughs> Shane's just getting his old back, own back now, hasn't he? Now you look at it from this angle, that, that, his old back, yeah, getting his own back. He doesn't look infused most when of the time. When you look at it from this angle, the, the, the yellow off the yellow just isn't there, is it? It's, um, what about cutting the yellow back off the yellow, off the other yellow, and then in the middle back? <laughs> yes, yes. I think that's the shot. My kind of shot. He's playing the, the top yellow off the red. I think. Double. No. Oh, it went. It passes. Never. Oh my oh. days. He's, he's, a a needle. he's just trolled everyone. He just, he's done a Mark Williams. He's literally had our pants down yeah, there. Yeah, he's trolled everyone. Has he done that on purpose? Oh yeah. <laughs> that is brutal. <laughs> just to, just to flummox brutal. us. How is, how is that gone? To, I mean, well, that he, li he literally had to brush that, yellow, oh, that red on the way past. The first red, yeah, but he missed the second one by, you know, a couple of inches there yeah. was obviously quite yeah. a bit of room yeah, that's naughty that yeah but the, the, the oh. first one was obviously on the line to the pocket so he, he literally it was a coat of paint that he missed it by our cameraman's troll as well because he could have got us that angle I reckon <laughs> that's unbelievable that is superb the cue ball control there is, was the cue in is just exemplary. phenomenal isn't it as a touch shot that is so difficult he's obviously watched me play before he's played that with bottom and right hand side yeah great shot and killed the pace of the cue ball beautiful he is one of the best around at, doing, at playing those shots because of, because of his cue action I mean Shane Shane plays pretty much the same yeah, way in pretty. terms of that they both got a very similar stroke, a long, a long cue action, and um, I mean, it's no surprise that Mark's got the, the slightly bigger size tip. I think it was like 8.65 mil, which is probably just slightly over average, um, because this is this is the epitome of how he plays. When you watch Shane, it's exactly the same. That kind of touch off the cushions and things. After what he's just said about us, I don't want to massage his ego. <laughs> We should have over that. But Marky <laughs> boy, oh, da, 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 da. But a game, it. a game Catch between it. Mark and Shane would be very aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Might not fancy it after this performance. <laughs> Say again, sorry. I said a game between yourself and Mark Boyle would be very aesthetically pleasing. No, it's just two on one, isn't it? <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. Can't do it. It's easier games than that, there, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who relishes games against Mark? I mean, I know that there's talk of the um, Mark Boyle Tom Cousins trilogy game. I mean, that's. Uh, I don't think anyone would relish taking on Mark Boyle in this form. I don't think there's a, a, a player in the world. You know, there's only a couple that that. Um, you know, that you would put up there and someone like Liam Dunster but I mean Liam would never play Mark for money no. um, no, I don't I don't actually think Liam would ever play for money I don't think he would but he uh, definitely wouldn't play Mark That's, you know I mean they're good mates Liam's just sat sat, sat in his corner uh, cheering him on I just I'm not sure Liam even likes the app like the, the atmosphere around it no but this performance like when you when you look at this performance you know who is out there The problem is when you reach the level that these two are at, Shane included, uh, you're not getting any easy cash games. That's why this result is such a surprise. A beast, a beast of a break. We keep saying it, it's a monster. It, it's, it's as effective as any break you will ever see from wow. anybody. They talk about uh, Jack Whelan's break, about Tom Cousins' break. The power of, uh, of, of Tom and Jack is, is phenomenal, but Mark generates almost that same power from the second ball down. It's, it's incredible. Nobody, nobody in the World Cup breaks like this. Nobody.
He is best in class. These are a little bit tricky though. I think what he'll do is, and Shane will help me here, when he plays onto this yellow that's right at the top of the table, he might be tempted to play it off the red. I think, no, I think he's taking red. Oh, he's going to take red? I think, well, he was looking at red just now. I think he was looking at playing the, the yellow uh, bottom left as we look to go into the red, into the other red. But I, I think I'd be going yellows here. Yeah, I think yellows. you have more control over yellows, don't you? Yeah. You, you, you trust, is going you're, you're trusting to luck a little bit on this first shot. I think when you've got this lead, you don't mind trusting to luck. True. That's, that's a great shot. And why would you not? When why you're would running you not? like that. Great shot. Absolutely perfect. When you're able to put that white ball exactly where you want, it makes the game so much easier. Yeah. Just taking his time here because he's just finished slightly out of position to ideal. That's perfect. That's okay. Back into prime position. clinic what can you say it's just been perfect pool by Mr Magic I guess there's only one player really that we, we didn't mention when we were talking about the top names to, to take on Mark Boyle I mean Mick Foley the, the next game for uh, Mick Foley yeah Michael Foley perhaps yeah. Yeah. or uh Maybe the real number one. Ryan McCarthy. <laughs> Excrement in order. <laughs> yeah, Mark's on his list, but it's a little way up. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some more games before. He's going to play Shane a couple of times before that. Uh, let's hope give Shane a battering you're not in that league Shane sorry to say mate
Obviously, potted a ball off the break for oh. a change, and that's where it's landed. where he's landed. Like, it is just... It's incredible. <laughs> look at the look on his foot. It's not any lottery tickets. Absolutely Outrageous. criminal. Touching ball on the eight. You, you got you you got to feel for him, aren't you? You have to feel for him. That is utterly disgusting. I don't think you can see anything. Oh, I don't think you can see the shallow. I don't it's either. Absolutely sick. Surely not. He's, he's killing. Sick. Surely that. Maybe he's told himself if he can see it. Doesn't look like it on our screens. Oh, he could. Good shot. That's a great shot. He swerved That's that. That's a player swerve. He swerved that. What a great shot. But to land there, like, Jesus. Yeah, look at the spin on the cue ball as it, as it comes away, you can see. Yes. A double. Now he's having to play a double. And he's still not out oh. here. Yeah, and even then the two yellows at the bottom, one of them's got, he's got to try and squeeze past that red. I mean, sometimes, like I say, it's, it's just not your day. And it, and as good as um, as good as Mark Ball has been, it hasn't been his day. It's he must feel like throwing the towel in. can't see any problems here anyway no every red has a pocket both these reds past the eight Shane just no issues uh, it's getting hard to commentate on this I think he'll leave I think he may pop one of these reds now closest to the eight and then leave one for a little bit later The only, the only other great thing about this scoreline, we might get away in time to get the Curry House. <laughs> Say that again. We might get away in time to get up the Curry House. Yeah, I'm keen for that. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? I mean, I thought this is. Do, we, do I have to minimum. put a receipt in for it? Put a receipt in for that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought this was going to be minimum 11 p.m. Yeah, I'll just be fair. I thought, minimum. yeah. I think it's in Martin Boyle's head to try and beat him by 20. Well, you, you, want, you want to win by as, as, as big a margin as possible. But it's just unbelievable. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah, I, I look at the scoreline, still think we've got it wrong. We've watched it all. I know. I know. It, it, it's. I mean, it's, it's been one of them games, on it? Like Mark has been, uh, Mark Boyle has been unbelievable, and Franz has just not had any run at all obviously he's made mistakes but that's down to Mark that's down to Boyle putting the pressure on him I mean if you were if you were running a book on this and you ran two markets an over underline on the on the amount of frames and also the correct score you, you, you'd have a clean sweep because yeah. no one's no one's betting the under no. and, uh, and no one's and, betting and, this score and no one's betting this score line no. regardless just So Mark Boyle really is just putting the finishing touches on this match. I cannot speak highly enough. I recognise that um, some people would have bought the stream and have been busy during the day and probably just tuning in now, expecting to put their feet up and watch uh, several good hours of pool. Well, you can watch this match back. It'll be live for the next couple of weeks, uh, so you can watch it at any time over the next two weeks. If you have missed the first half or, or the action up to now, then, um, then, and then do watch it back because it really has been a sublime performance from Mark Boyle and uh, just 
two frames away from victory now and uh, we can say with certainty who is going to be the victor in this match that's the tail of the tape and that really says it all that, that, that number right at the top the breaking, breaking clearances Mark Boyle 9-3 those uh, unforced errors are, are, are quite even evenly spread between the two players but the telling one there is the dry breaks 9-2 um, if you reverse that dry break 9-2 the other way then the scoreline would easily be very very different from, from this but uh, as David said earlier that's not that's not the tail of the match Mark Boyle has played some exemplary ball Mark Farnsworth has not been at his best there's been a few mistakes in there which we don't expect but uh, you know everyone has an off day you don't want an off day when you're playing a big money game in front of your home crowd but that's just the way it's worked out for him today I will use the same word again it really has just been a relentless performance from Mark Boyle from the moment we introduced him into the arena at 2 p.m. there was never any doubt in his, in his mind he is literally I mean last night he said that he'd taken his break up another level from the start of this year from when he started back in the game and uh, he's been putting in a lot of table time and doesn't it show this is one of the greatest performances you will see in any money match <laughs> you have to laugh the one time the first time in the match he looks like he might scratch he would have been unlucky and the cue ball just stays on the table hangs and he's got choice choice of parts choice of colours That is a poor shot. Yeah, it's a rare one. He'll, he'll play. He'll play the cock tap back up the line. I thought, is he on the, he's on the double actually. Uh, can play either. This is my All board. three of them shots are on the cock out, the double, and the cut. Yeah, the cuts there as well. The double it is. Just not missing a thing. Everything that's in front of him, he's gobbling up. Even when it goes wrong, it's still right. If I was a DJ now, I'd be uh, I'd stick on the proclaimers "Sunshine on Leaf" about now. A chant for the Scottish. <laughs> they won't be doing that in the uh, in, in the away venue, though. I can't see that happening. <laughs> Even at 29, 11 up still at the same pace I will, I, I'll come back to it again because I think I mentioned it a long long time ago during the game but um, I don't think that there's a person around who would um, who wouldn't just I mean even the, the most staunch Mark Farnsworth fans won't deny Mark Ball this result in this score will it I mean it's uh, it's just a performance pretty sure he can just roll this red in and leave himself the perfect angle to top through land on the, land on the black into the same pocket he's playing this ball into That's perfect. We're running out of adjectives.
It's worth noting though, despite the massive frame distance, you know, he's, he's not conceded, he's not thrown the towel in. It's just nothing's gone for him at all. Shows the character of the man. Yeah. I'm sure he just wants to shake his hand now. Yeah. Or well, probably an hour ago. But he hasn't. Mark Boyle is on the hill. Just one more frame. This will send a bit of a shock around the pool world. For people who haven't watched this, when this result gets out on social media, there'll be a lot of people who are, who are just flummoxed by this, this scoreline. It is baffling. I mean, and when you think there were people offering odds on Mark Boyle. Surely, it's got to be a dry break and a reverse dish to finish. It's been a story of the night. So. Nope, it's got a ball. And, and, a that, and now he gets, now he gets the splits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. unbelievable. That is pretty. Pretty much one of the best ones he's done all day. We sat there not wanting to pot these balls. You just wouldn't, would you? setting Mark up for the break dish to win yeah I'll never forget that moment in the first match where it was 30 30 29 and Mark Boyle broke and the whole of the arena just went wild they knew he'd won and he had eight uh, you know eight balls to pop That's the fastest I've ever seen Mark Farnsworth play a frame the pool. It's just, it's he's, fly, he's flying around the table. You're not human if you don't feel sorry for him. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Scottish boys cheering for him as well. Wow, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that a smile? The kid was. It's a bit dark over there. And I don't think there's... Um, I don't think there's any irony in those cheers either. It's just... Yeah. I, th I think everyone can see that it's, it's been a struggle for Mark tonight. It's third just dry break it's of the day. Twisting the knife, rubbing <laughs> the salt in the last two frames. And there's a very ironic look on, on Mark's looking at this thinking, yeah, why didn't this happen earlier? Like, you know, the break the break clearance I just got and then followed by a dry break. It's not happened all match. See the other the other key for me is um, the break clearances for for Mark Farnsworth. I mean, 
if I said to you that Mark Farnsworth has played 42 frames of ball, broken 21 of them, how many break clearances he, as, he, as he had, you would you would say to me, well, 10, 12, because it's just what he does. He's had four. That's still one in three when he's potted a ball, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had some, yeah, some pretty smelly breaks. And I don't think he can quite get through the potting angle that yellow. I, so I think he can. I think he's okay. Maybe not. No. Nope. Looks okay, I think. But I'm not too sure. He's had a look at the one at the bottom of the table, but that's also tight. It's a tight pass to red. I don't think he can. You know, I really don't. No, he, uh, can't, he can't get to that. And, and, and I'm not sure he can get to the one at the bottom of the table either. He, he may just be able to squeeze it into the... Oh, no, he's got, into he's the, got the, whole, the, he's got the whole ball. Oh, he has got the whole ball, yeah. You can oh, see wow, 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 no. That's because he had to come back up to get them in the middle. Yeah. Uh, well, that kind of sums up the game, doesn't it? Yep. If you wanted a summary of the game in the final yeah. frame... That's it right there. Wow. Just using this free shot to open up his only problem balls on top right hand side of the table. And this you feel should be all she wrote. A very anti-climatic finish to the match. Certainly not what we anticipated at half past two. No. No, indeed. And, um, I mean, while it's not been the classic that we wanted it to be, that kind of 31-28, it's been a classic in its own way. It's still been a classic in, in terms of this performance because you won't see many performances like this turned in over this, over this distance in a race of 31 to see somebody just dominate the whole match. Not just parts of it. Normally you see spells of momentum going each way. Let's make no bones. Mark Boyle has dominated this game from start to finish. And you will very rarely ever see a performance like that. He's been absolutely incredible. From the moment he got to the table at 2 p.m. this afternoon, he won the first frame and he will win the last. Again, while we're uh, while Mark's just putting the finishing touches to this, I will say thank you to everybody at home for tuning in, and obviously a thanks to the amazing crowd that have turned up here today. Been really respectful. They've been fabulous. Thank you guys for supporting Beer Productions. Thanks also to to, to Beer Productions himself, to Paul, George, and Frank who, who got here on Wednesday and have just done just worked tirelessly over the last few days to to bring you this stream. And it, uh, I mean, I, I can't even describe to you the, um, the, the setup here. It's just incredible. There's so much equipment here. It's, it's fantastic. And, and, and they, they're perfectionists. And it's reflected in what you see on your screens at home. And, Super. Uh, yeah, we, 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 hope to, uh, we hope to be back with you in the future. And you supporting these streams gives us the ability to bring you more and more games. And we hope to do so. But in the meantime, it's all about Mark Boyle. It's been an amazing performance from him. He will do this. He will probably look to the heavens. He will shake hands and he will say, this one was for you, Laura. This was absolutely for you. And was, she was there with him for the whole match, Dave. That was nice to see at the end. It wasn't just a handshake, it was a hug. I'll tell you something. no animosity between them. 
This is what it means to him. Look at him. Threw his glasses on the table and this is what it means to him. What a performance. What a man. What a player and what a performance. That one was for Laura. In all the very best ways. Amazing. A clinical performance. Look at that. A standing ovation from both sides of the room. Yeah. The fans on the Farnsworth side. A standing ovation. The fans on his side. Stand and salute. They know they've seen something just a little special. Mark taking his plaudits, just shaking hands with just about everybody in the audience. Stephen Allenson with the, the Scotland flag. I announced him at the top of the game as the pride of Scotland or Scotland's. Says a lot about yeah. Mark Farnsworth and how he runs his club. Both sides of the arena clapping, giving a big round of applause yet again to Mark Boyle. Amazing for Mark though that he took the time to go across and thank every one of Mark Farnsworth fans before going over and taking the plaudits from his own corner. Absolutely. That's amazing. Quality. I'm sure we will be back with more cash games, but I don't think any player will be in a rush to take on Mark Boyle anytime no, indeed. soon. No, indeed. It'll be a pleasure to get him back on Beer Productions, but uh, yeah, who's his opponent going to be? Yeah. That was incredible. I I can tell you we will be trying to get Mark Boyle across after he's uh, after he's spent some time with his fans. We'll get him across into the interview room and, and, and have a chat with him and just get his thoughts after that game. That was um, that was something special, really was. Shaking hands there with Liam Dunster and uh, I, I, I leaves me to also thank Mark Farnsworth for having him at his club. His club is an absolute credit to him. His fans are a credit to him. And uh, this really is a, a, a great club. It, it, it's fantastic. It's uh, it's a breath of fresh air, and uh, yeah, it's um, hats off to Mark to do that away from home against one of the best players in the world. Yeah. It really was just something special. So we will try and uh, coerce Mark over for a chat. I remember the last time I threw a microphone in front of uh, Santa's, Santa's and Santa's uh, nose um, was on the conclusion of uh, uh, a Boyle Money match and I said who's next and he called out Mark Farnsworth and that was, that was how this all started and, uh, and there he is shaking hands with Mark Farnsworth now. Time to do it again Nick. Yeah I'm going to stick it. You've got to ask Mark Boyle who's next. <laughs> Who does he want? Amazing, amazing. So we're going to get to hear from the man himself. You can see he's just packing up his queue. We will we'll get him across here in a minute. And uh, just super. That Take score a line. Just look at it, Dave. Let's just take a moment to look at that score line. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and then get Mark Boyle over, hopefully for a little interview.
Well, I'm joined by Mark Boyle. I don't know if he's going to be able to hear me. I'm going to have to shout loud. <laughs> Mark, we're going to have to get close together, I think, to be able to hear each other. <laughs> that was just an incredible performance. Just, just talk us through it, Mark. Just give us your initial thoughts. To be honest, before the break, I was I didn't feel like I was queuing. And it was just balls went my way, breaks went my way. Farms were flung in a, a few misses that he wouldn't normally. So I was buzzing to be leaving and when I came back after the break I just felt everything clicked because I've been feeling good coming into this, but coming out to this atmosphere was amazing and I was just so I was calm but edgy at the same time so but I can't kinda complain. Have you ever have you I mean you've been involved in some classic money matches, some amazing games, tight games as well. Yeah. Have you ever played better than that in any money match? At the start I would say I struggled. The first few frames, I, but I mean you've just been sublime. For after the break, I played perfect. Yeah. I played brilliant. Yeah. I played brilliant yeah. after the break. But uh, that was a team talk with my best friend Gary and Santa in the car, you know, so that wee team talk just basically, I just, I just felt so relaxed today. I was even singing, away, I think the songs helped, the music, I was singing away every song, uh, but amazing. In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine that scoreline? 32-1, 12 frames. You've just beaten Mark Barnsworth by 19 frames. Amazing. But that's cool, that's cool. Farnsworth could do that to me, you know. Tom done it to me, you know, it's, it's just cool. That's how it's so entertaining. We spoke last night and you knew that Laura was going to be in your corner. Oh, she always is. She's right there with you, obviously, oh, the whole game. million percent. She's always been there. She's always been like a rock. She's basically been there. Had my back, and she always will, and she's always pointing me in the right direction, you know. I, uh, I know I've got that up there, but I've got a good lady here, Kate, as well. Let's say uh, I've met, I've been chatting for about a month with her, and she's brought me from there to there, you know. So that's the new Mark Boyle we've seen. Mark, because, because of Kate, sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. Mark, just just a word about your fans as well. Let's just let's just let's just mention them. I know they've struggled to get down here this weekend, but you've still got a good travelling crowd. The best bunch ever. They just love, just love pool. They love, just love everything about it. They love a, a baby, you know. So it's, it's perfect for them. But uh, to travel down, with all the trains getting cancelled. Some of them get Christine and I got a taxi down for uh, Edinburgh. So uh, you can't fault them. They, they basically got my back, I've got their back, you know, so, and you feed off it, you feed off it, and that's what, that's what brings that out, yeah. you know. Mark, I mean, this will go down as one of the great performances in money matches for certain. It maybe wasn't the classic that people wanted, a nice tight game. Yeah, yeah. You don't mind, you're well, happy to win by 90. I don't want a tight game. All i got to say, mate, is I'm absolutely made up for you. You're one of the nicest guys in the game. The, the, the fact that you even went over, took the time to go over and, and shake his fans' hands before you came and took the plaudits from yours is a measure of you. You're an absolute credit to the game. I can't, I can't find... Everybody's been perfect. I don't think one person got chucked out. No. Not one person. No. No. So that just tells you the people that are involved in pool now. Yep. Uh, it's just going to new levels every year. Yep. So hopefully it keeps growing yep. uh, and I can retire. <laughs> I stuck a microphone under Santa's nose right. at the end of a money match once and I said, who's next? Aye, he and he called out Mark Farnsworth. And he was singing as well. So who's next? <laughs> when I started playing money matches, this is the one I always wanted. I always wanted to play Farnsworth in his home venue because I knew it would be electric. And uh, for it to happen, that's all I've thought about for the past two, three months. You know, and it probably showed on the table because it's been there. And uh, for me, I said to a few of my friends through the week, I said this will probably be my last ever money match. Probably will be. 
How, how can you beat that? Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Mark, I'm absolutely made up for you. Any closing thoughts? Anything you want to say to the fans watching at home as well? Just thanks to everybody for having my back, being there for me when, when I was at my lowest, and being there for my family. I just can't thank everybody enough. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to pay them all back one day. You're winner of the money match. Mark Farnsworth. <laughs> what the hell? You're winner of the money match. <laughs> I've got him in my head. Mark Boyle. Love you, mate. Well done, buddy. Brilliant. Well done, mate.